Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Shit, <laughs> get out of here, Vilsoul. Jesus. Coming in hot there, Vilsoul. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Anna, Anna Ruma with the first, literally first person here. Marius in lap from Dex after you got it today. Matt didn't ruin your your thunder. Your thunder. <laughs> I don't believe, jeez, no. Please stay, Vilsoul. I have, can you hear that? Sounds like a an animal is dying. I don't know if you can hear that. That's my tummy rumbling. <laughs> I put it at this doggo. Can you hear that? Animal is dying. Oh no! Whoops. Uh, no, that's my coffee being made. Uh, that's just what it's it, just what coffee sounds like, you know. Hope everyone's doing well. How's it? How's everyone going? Today, I uh, at least definitely know what I'll be doing. Nice. What are you doing? What's what, what is? We got any co-workers here? One in the chat. If you're gonna, if you're gonna work on some stuff. Um, one in the chat. One Londo. Okay, nice. And if you can, if you want to share what you're working on, feel free to to share. And I will share. I'll share what I'm gonna be working on today, and then we, and then I'll read what you guys are working on. So what I'll be working on is. Uh, okay, so today <clears throat> I want to have a uh, font size or font scale. Um, actually, I don't know how I want to do this, but I want to have like, I want to explore that so that like, you know, eventually when I offer people the opportunity to, you know, if they want to use larger font sizes or something, then they can do that. It could, it, this actually, this is just sort of investigation, actually. I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to do it because I may need to like use separate fonts or themes or something like that. And I don't understand that yet. So I'll poke around with that. Uh, however, I want to do text animation in so that like when texts come in, like they come in letter by letter. Um, and then the subsequent uh, required UX for that as well, like press button to auto fill everything, whatever. Uh, that's the same thing here. I want to look, work a little bit on, on dialogue history UI. I'll talk a little bit more about that when I get there. Uh, and this is related to that. That's what I'm going to be working on. Just dialogue stuff today. But. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Do I, do I, hang on. Do I unveil my, ooh, ooh. Let's see here. This is scary. I think. This is okay. Oh, maybe we had a leak. We'll see. We'll try not to leak. We'll try not to leak. Okay, here we go. Try not to leak. Try not to leak. This is my internal. This is internal planning here, folks. Okay, so here's one of my tasks is dialog box. And we have done this many of them. Uh, this is very quick to do. This is basically, um, yeah, pull random text instead of actual text later when I have actual dialogue in the game. Can you actually see this? I'm not sure. Uh, we've got localization done. That's a big one. Font size, that's what I'm thinking of looking into. I'm going to uh, look into right to left a little bit at some point. Tech speed, which is sort of what we'll d do today as well. Dialogue history is actually, I've actually done quite a bit of this or some of this. I need to refactor it. So, you know, this is all I have planned in terms of regular dialogue box functionality. And when that is done, we can maybe take off our first feature. Doesn't mean there won't be more things to do in the future, but largely it's done. So. Okay, so let's see here. Oh, 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 wow. I don't know what happened there, Londo. Uh, Going to read what you guys are doing. Co-working here. Nice, Phil Soul. My coffee sounds sound like a choir of angels, Maddie. Holy shit, I need, I need your coffee machine. <laughs> if you got your coffee in the kitchen, yeah. That's a coffee reminder. Going to be like reading, so listening through a like training program for my new job. Oh my god. Nice, Anna. You, when do you start next week or... I don't fucking ROS is a pain in the ass. What is ROS? Uh, and should be wiped with the existence of the universe. What is ROS? 
ROS. Robot operating system. Robots. One, learning. I still have no driver's license, and it's hard for me to discipline myself for doing it. Okay, so you're learning driving stuff, Dexath? BB code, I haven't seen that word in years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the uh, labels have uh, built-in support for BB code, so we're using that. Uh, a co-op function? Like a two-player? No. Hey, uh, Jay Reddick. I'm working on my day job, an MS Word add-in to help proofreaders and editing professionals. All in C-sharp too. Nice. Today's job is some yak shaving and testing some NuGet package upgrades. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. That sounds cool. We'll clean and cook food and play satisfactory later. Nice. All right, robotics operating system. Okay. Coffee sings when I stir it. Wow. That's, I, wait, really? What the fuck? Roberts. Yep, that's how it's pronounced, actually. Roberts. Uh, working on voxel stuff as always. Nice autochromes. Working as well on a chatbot for Twitch. Cool. Wow, everyone's working on different things. Interesting stuff. We got learners. We got programmers. We got gamers. We got cleaners. Ro ro roboteers. Fiddling with choosing a terrain system. Wait, what for? What for, Bacon? Technically start on Wednesday. But that's with the introductory program. I'll actually start in the factory on the 12th. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. What What is the job, Anna? If, if you don't mind sharing. I mean, you don't have to. Um, how did I get into game development? Um, it's a, how did I get into it? Uh, I was 19 years old and in maximum despair. And I needed to find purpose in life. And I was playing Final Fantasy XII, and I was like, you know what? I really like games. I'm just going to try and learn how to make games. So I quit my jobs. <laughs> I went to school. That was it. And then I studied a bunch, made a bunch of games. Eventually, one thing led to another. I ended up getting um, my first game job in Japan. I was um, working as a programmer there. Um, doing some web development stuff, and then I ended up getting a, a job at, at a game company there. That's where it started, yeah. Truck engine assembly. Holy shit, Anna. Wait, is that why you were playing truck sim yesterday? I was lurking a, a bit. I didn't hear too much of it, unfortunately, but I gave you a lurk, Anna. Um, interesting, interesting. Yeah, learning the German driving stuff. I see. <laughs> Grammar's on point today. It's fine. Uh, robots are only fun when they're real on a sled going 40 miles an hour. It was Jesus. What the fuck, Wilson? What are you working on? Holy cow. Holy cow. You worked at Nintendo? No, I didn't work at Nintendo. I worked at SNK. If you guys have heard of, like, um, Metal Slug and, um, King of Fighters and things like that. Yeah, I worked there. Neo Geo, yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the work culture in Japan like? How are the offices too? Uh, it depends where you go. It's it, it, it depends where you go. It, it was it was pretty good working at SNK, honestly. Uh, Japan in general has a pretty rough uh, work culture. They work they work hard. They put in a lot of hours there. Um, and then the game industry has that too, <laughs> everywhere. And then when those combine, it can be kind of bad. Uh, but my experience at SNK was quite good. It was quite good. I, I enjoyed my time there. I really did. Yeah. I love my Neo Geo Pocket Color. Nice. I never had a Neo Geo. I actually don't even know anyone who had one when I was growing up in Australia. I don't know. It's like not a big thing in Australia or something. Weird. I was playing uh, U-Truck Simulator 2 because that's what the poll, uh, poll decided, I see. But I got to thinking about it because I actually got the job. Right, right. Makes sense. My driving gaming chair in the middle of my room at basically all times, so it's a constant reminder of driving games. All right, cool. Excellent. All right, before I get started... Warming up the hands. That's right, we're ready to type now. Uh, before I get started, I'm going to grab my coffee, so I'll be uh, one second, folks. One second.
have you guys ever had those like coffee pots you know where it's like it's it's like it's only function it's only function is to pour liquid right that's that's all that's all it needs to do literally one job pour liquid but there is almost no angle that you can pour the liquid at without the liquid spilling everywhere have have you guys ever it's like they never tested their 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 pot have you guys ever come across this kind of thing before is it just is it have i literally got the only pot in the world that does this yes almost every pot <laughs> would only pour over the work service <laughs> what the hell is with that That was after the pot screamed at me. Jeez. So weird. Germany, ever Germans everywhere. Yeah, there's a lot of Germans here. I have a lot of Germans in my chat. I'm okay with that. Tomorrow I start my training as a signaler. Nice. What's a, wait, what is a signaler? Signal, what are you signaling? A developer can be expressed as public code do work. Coffee, coffee, yeah. Signal is Dutch, Deutsch Bahn. I looked away for. I still don't know what a signal is. Throws out of coffee exception. <laughs> Design them to sell, not work very well. I guess, I guess so. Trains. Okay. All right, cool. So apparently all coffee pots <laughs> just don't work. Apparently that's a, a core feature. Otherwise it's not a coffee pot, just a regular pot. All right. So let's take a quick look-see at my um, rash. I'm just kidding. Um, my font size stuff. Um, suddenly I don't want to do it. Suddenly I just don't want to do it, actually. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that on stream. Um, this, actually, I didn't think of this before. This might be a can of worms. Uh, and I would prefer to be productive on stream instead of struggle with can of worms stuff. Where possible. Where possible. No! No, no, fuck that. All right, text animate in. We can do that, though. Um, so text animate in visible characters. This is a thing here. So if we go to here, Godot, visible <laughs> characters. Visible characters. Set visible characters. Get visible characters. Number of characters display. Animating the text appearing in the box. Yeah, that's pretty good. Setting this property updates visible ratio. Visible ratio, the fraction of characters to display relative. To, oh, interesting. So the total number of characters is set to one, all characters displayed. Okay, this is actually really interesting. So it could be, right? This could be that if you want all your text to be visible in one second, you can just ramp up visible ratio to one over one second. And it doesn't matter if there's only a little bit of text or a lot of text. So that's uh, pretty neat. I don't know which one I want to use. I think for the moment, I'll just use visible characters. Um, what's this visible characters behavior? What's this? Characters before shaping. Before the shaping. Oh no. It's the final shaping. <laughs> Chat, be careful. They're going to carve off the edges. Uh, Displays glyphs that are mapped to the first level visible. <laughs> this is weird. I, I don't know what this means. Okay, let's just do visible characters. Let's just get a basic thing going. What type of coffee do you have? I forgot. Hey, Moyang Dev, or not a Moyang Dev. Introducing the new coffee pot with 12% less village. Should have no percent, 0% spillage. 
uh, uh, Varian Knight, thank you very much for the follow. Also, uh, Tom C2, thank you. Appreciate it. Productive on stream? What kind of bizarre land have I been transported to? I've been pretty productive the past few streams. The easiest to use the theme system for fonts for when you look at it later. That's what I'm thinking. That's why That's why it's, uh, that's why that's the can of worms that I don't want to get into because I don't understand that system properly yet. But I have a feeling because I've, I've looked at, I've briefly looked at themes and I had the feeling that the solution will be somewhere in there. One other thing that I need to consider when I work with this is how I handle uh, fonts for other uh, languages too, if I need to. So it could be that everything is just taken care of, and it could be that every font that I use handles every language. I actually just don't know. But whatever solution I come come to needs to be able to account for that as well. So I'll, I'll look into it. I need to investigate that later. And by investigate, I mean binge watch YouTube videos on it to get a an idea. Every nth character is deleted. Dude, that put bad Apple fully rendered in an animated font. I don't know what that is. Uh, okay. Dialog box. All right. Dialog box. Okay. 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 Hmm. So this is our dialog box. We could say set visible a text a visible characters. We could do that equals zero, and then in process, if we're visible and scroll is active. Oh shit! Okay. Now we need to move this, if that's the case. So here, if we're visible and scroll is active, do the scroll related stuff. If we're visible, uh, then we should also do uh, um, message dot visible characters plus equals. some variable um, uh, text show speed I wonder if we want to do the Delta here actually uh, this is probably going to be int so we'll have to do um, Uh, seal. Seal to int. Oh, shit, that's sick. Seal to int. Yeah, that sounds good. Do this kind of thing. We'll make this variable. We'll make this int as well. This should be, uh, in... Characters per second is what I want. Uh... Maybe I just have this as a const. Uh, let's say 10 percent. No, hold on. Tw 30 characters per second. Um... How do I make sure that this doesn't go over? Uh, 
Get to negative one, all characters displayed. This updates. I want I wonder if it if it matters if visible characters gets goes over the number of characters that's there. But what I can do is I can go if visible ratio is less than one. Then bump it up. I don't know if I need to like check how many characters are supposed to be in here. I mean, there's a, probably a way to do it. Like I just get text dot length count. Number of currents, no, length. Number of characters. Like I, I can just do this if. Just do it properly. Uh, min. This actually just might work just like that. <clears throat> okay. What that new version is this? I think it's six. Yeah, I think it's six. I have seven installed, but I think I'm using six with Gudo. I'm not sure. Hello, multi. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Let's see if, let's give it a good dough. <laughs> Sorry. That was a long load time. Is everything okay? I'm gonna refund on my sub. Which one, which sub? Wait, what's the main character? This is fine, right? Okay, here we are. It's work. Look at that. Looks <laughs> looks good. <laughs> um, could be. Uh. Oh, this is wrong. I'll do it. Ship it, yeah. <laughs> Ship it. Oh! Okay, this doesn't work that great when you have a scroll bar, though. I mean, it works okay. Not bad. Any reason for using tuple over value tuple? I have no idea. Where's tuple? Here, this one? I, I don't know what the difference is. But this might change anyway, so I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> pretty good. So actually, I, what I, I didn't do a little bit of progress actually, um, uh, or progress update. Uh, so what I've what I've done, uh, and 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 this actually showed it here, folks. We didn't have this support before, but see, when I, I start this text, and then when I go to the next text, it goes to the next text. We didn't have support for queued text. Now we do, and uh, it's quite quite easy. Where um. If I do it, I just push dialogue. Push, push, and it just works. Innovative. Incredible. Hello, Red Bearded Joe. The tree. Not, what? It's a tree, not a still, though? A still? 
Jasonvents.next, yeah. We have that. There was something else that I did as well. I, I started doing support for this, this other thing that we'll get to later. Um, and I was really happy with my implementation of it. And then... Um, <laughs> Wait, visible ratio? Yeah, that's okay. Sorry, I got distracted by nothing. <laughs> yeah, I started working on something and I was really happy with it. And then um, I checked it in. I was like, yeah, wait, I did that completely wrong. <laughs> so now I have to redo it. Um, okay. So where's the bit where I do... That's that. How do I do main character, interactable, scroll or close? Hmm. is animating. Uh, else? Show all text. Message dot vis uh dot visible is less than one. If that or maybe I should do it for safety's sake on visible. Oh boy! Squish Fox just gifted five subs. Yo! What? Squished Fox! Oh my god. Five gifted subs! Thank you, thank you so much, holy cow. Very kind. Enjoy your emotes, everyone, and add free viewing. Thank you very much for the generosity, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> the invention of dialogue, circa 2023. Give Jason how to play the game. Yeah, is that, that's a, that's a thing. Um, that's a reward. Are we sharpening our developer skills today? We're, we're working, we're working. We're working. Plodding along. Sharpening with a kitchen floor tile. Hey, they can be sharp. I just notice you have the ca same coding style as one of my colleagues. The, the most confused coding style you could imagine. I don't know. It's a product of like having different coding standards at like a bunch of different companies. So now I should be able to, there we are. See, I, I tap, double tap E and then it completes. See that? Nice. Am I missing anything? Oh boy! Squish Fox with a sub. Holy cow, you're sub too. Thank you very much. Holy cow. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
<laughs> you gifted the subs before you made your coffee. I wonder if you're not subbed and you gift subs, is there a chance that you get one of the gifted subs? Is that possible? It's airy. A little too airy for your liking, but I don't mind it. Okay, I see. Curly bracket belongs on the end of the statement line. I'll fucking die on this hill. Alright, well, die on the hill then, Bill Soul. Because that ain't happening. That ain't happening in my code. <laughs> Let's try gifting 10,000 subs for a decent test case. Yeah, I like you should die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I think I think that's done. I can't think of anything else that needs to be done with this. We have something where we can adjust the speed. There's something that like I would like in the future to make dialogue more expressive. Is like some dialogue could render out slower, um, but I don't really know how I want to do that yet because it could be. There's all sorts of like little bells and whistles that I can add to dialogue, like pausing the dialogue at a certain point, you know, things like that. Um, and then continuing like after a short pause, you know, there's all sorts of things. So I think for now I just leave it because that's like a level of polish that I think can safely be built upon what I have now. I don't think I've gone against that grain. Um, and also it's just like, there are far, far, far more important things at this point now to, to keep working on, right? Like, uh, I can't I can't go too deep on the polish rabbit hole um, when when there's so many other design questions that need to be answered before I before that's even relevant. So, yeah. But hey, that's kind of nice. Cool, easy win. Get out of here! Bam. <sighs> Let's commit it. Uh, text now animates in player can, uh, auto complete text with interact button. Send it up to the cloud. <laughs> May I ask what you are using for stream closed captions? Yeah. Yeah, sure. You can ask. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna ask? No, anyway, sorry. Um, it is a plugin called uh, I think it's called Cloud Closed Caption. Let me find it. Oh, it's this one here. I'm gonna put it in the chat. I think it's this one. It's super, 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 super uh, convenient. Um, you don't even you don't have to do anything. You just you set like what audio source you want it to detect the um, the thing on, and that's literally all you have to do. You don't have to do anything else. It's all done as soon as you do that. You can choose whether you want it to uh, pick up from the audio source uh, only <laughs> when it's you know transmitting out to stream, which is useful, so that you know closed captions aren't being detected when I'm on like my be right back screen or something like that. Uh, yeah, and you don't have to do anything else. That's it. You just do that. Like I've used some before where you have to like open up a web page. You have to start it, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to do any of that. It just does it automatically. And there's like a preview. I can see what the closed captions um, in my OBS. I can actually see what it's doing in OBS without having to go to the stream and wait for it to pop up. It's really, really good. Simon is the base in the basement being fed alpha keys as payment for writing the CC. He's a very quick typer, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I wonder how it works on a non-native English speaker. Yeah, I'm not sure. Have to see. Not too sure. But it's uh, it's far better than some other ones that I've seen too, like in terms of accuracy, at least for my accent. Like, I have a friend who's used it. Uh, I mean, like, Snoot uses it, and my friend uses it. My other friend. Um, but, obviously, like, both of their English is insanely good, and their accents are really good, too. So, that's not a great... They're not great examples. 
of if it works with other accents or not. Okay, <clears throat> so next thing, next thing, next thing. Uh, let's work on this dialogue history UI. Now, what is dialogue history and why is that important? Uh, I think dialogue history is an incredibly important feature for any game that has um, dialogue specifically, especially dialogue that players need to read. Um, there has been countless amounts of times where I'm playing a game and I have to read, and I do look at the words, and I, I read the words, but they, I don't let them sink in because maybe I, my focus wanes or something like that. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck happened? You know? And I can't go back and just read it, right? Because my focus and memory is awful. Um, and there are some games that have this dialogue history thing where you can just at any point, like during a cutscene, bring up what was said and it shows the whole like history of what, what was said in that conversation. And I think that's really, really, really useful. And um, I, I actually really, really love that feature. And when games don't have that feature now, I really feel it. So in my game, there's going to be dialogue and I want there to be dialogue history. And I want the way that I want it to work is that there'll be some max limit of how much dialogue gets saved in a history, but that it is accessible at any point. So I can open up my dialogue history in the middle of dialogue. I can open up my dialogue history while I'm walking around, whatever. That's how I want it to work. Crosscode has a lot of nice features like that. Yeah, I think Crosscode does have that. Yep. Uh, some other games have it too. There's like uh, actually some of the Yakuza games I think have it as well. Or maybe it was... Um, Lost Judgment, I'm not sure one of them did. Yeah. Various games have them. And then when they don't have it, I really feel it, so. Voice actors for the dialogue? No, 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 no. No voice acting. Will you have a mode where starting up after a while will trigger a controls and objectives reminder? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it'll need that. Well, I'll see, maybe. Okay, so I actually have this dialogue history sort of uh, implemented, but it's a little bit tricky. Um, the problem with it is that... Hmm. It's not that one. Pin. Pin you, pin you. Maybe pin you, and maybe pin. Maybe this one. <clears throat> so right now, I have my history. It gets stored. Right now, I don't know if I should save the history and save files. We'll see. That might not make that much sense to do that. But we'll see. Um, yeah, right now I have the history here, this queue of dialogue history. But there's a few things that need to be taken into account. Um, this doesn't really work super well right now. This is where I get the character ID, so I can fetch their name. Emote, in case I want to show their faces. I don't know if I want to do that or not. This is also the information resource that's that's used, that's created in Engine. But I don't know if I want to use this, um, because then for each message I would need to... Well, first of all, I can't translate messages using only this, because I need their dialogue container. And I could store all that, but I don't know if I want to store all that. Um, how do I explain this? The localization system is too confusing for me to explain. Uh, but... How do I explain this? I'm thinking of storing, uh, creating a new data type that just stores what I need to show the message queue. And what it could store is the translated string. So then all I need to do is just output that translated string. Um, I 
that might be problematic if a player changes their language in the middle of things because now with the translated string I can't really untranslate the string and then translate it to another language because the information to make that quick is now gone um, I could store information I could store the dialogue container and index So then I can recreate those dialogue history widgets. That way, all the relevant information is there. That feels kind of messy to me. The other issue is, and this is one of the big issues, is I want to have support such that translators can create additional dialogue boxes if they need to. Um, using some some series of characters. So it could be like like something, something, and then something else. Because maybe maybe it makes more sense to use, uh, you know, more dialogue boxes to better explain something or get a nuance across or something. Uh, and it, you know, and then in this case, what I could do is I could parse these characters, separate these, you know, translate the whole thing, parse these characters, separate them into two different message boxes. Um, Uh, and then just show them as two separate boxes. And that's like super, super doable. But then if I were to save these in the in the queue, I would have to save them as separate messages. Um, or I would like to save them as separate messages. Oh, boy. Ferex, thank you very much for the sub. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, if I save these as two separate messages, then I can't retranslate them. But what I'm thinking I can do, if I, if I allow one concession, this becomes easier, and that is uh, if the player changes their language, then the, the the dialogue that's saved in the history just remains the, the previous in whatever language it was it was in originally. And that's like not perfect, but like that's probably fine in most cases because people aren't constantly changing their languages. You know, they, you just change it to the one that you understand, right? And then And then even if they change it, and they play the game some more, they'll get more dialogue, and the old stuff will get pushed out eventually anyway. Uh, and this makes it really easy, because then all I really need to do is just store translated strings. I don't have to do anything else. Um, and that's the conclusion it seems like I came to here in my notes. Store only raw translated strings. Translated name, emote res resource in dialogue, yeah. And if I do that, then this becomes really, really, really easy. <clears throat> We get to hear your sweet voice in the game. No, I guess not. Jace makes narration and the voices of every NPC with accents, and there'll be a wildly varied set of accents. Everyone sounds the same. They can scold and go to racism by mistake. Save us would be ideal, so the dialogue persists when the game is restarted. Yeah, but I don't know if it's necessary. I don't know if it's completely necessary. Because um, it, it, it would be it would be nice, but then I don't know if I want to store... You know, see, if that's the case, and I, then I'm going to be saving entire translated strings in save file, which feels really weird. Um, There's another approach that I could take, which is that I store the dialogue containers, uh, and then I build the dialogue history out of the stored containers. I could do that. Um, and then I only rebuild it whenever I need to. Hmm. What if dialogue strings had a good and the dialogue is retrieved by that good? Uh, that doesn't work with localization. That puts a hamper in that. Uh, because, I mean, in, in a way, that that is kind of how it is. But 
then it breaks down when you consider that it can be translated into any number of languages. Um, and yeah, so like, yeah, there's a, like a bunch of things that are kind of pushing and pulling on this. Why not store the unlocalized string? The reason for that is because uh, in order to then uh, localize the string on the fly, I need the entire string untouched, right? But the point of this is to be able to create multiple dialog boxes. So if these are separated and need to be listed as two things, um, then they can't be stored as one whole thing. I mean, they technically could be, right? And then like, again, and then I, and then I build the dialog history out of the saved, you know, initial data which is doable but it's just i don't know if i want to be i don't know if i want to be building and rebuilding that and i feel like that's um a little dangerous so that that is a solution but i'm looking for other solutions hey frequency vaseline happy thursday to you too what about json file suffix with the language um no that won't that won't work in this case Be true history if it remained. The the yeah. So obviously it would be nice if it remained, but the um. When I think of the function of it, it's not necessarily. It's it's mostly for, if I was in if I was in a conversation with someone and I forgot what I was doing. It's not supposed to be, uh, your resource for like oh wait what what happened that one time in this conversation. It's supposed to be a catch all so that like. If you weren't paying attention at one time or if you accidentally went forward in a conversation it's just a thing that you can quickly look back at like i don't want it to necessarily be seen as um like an encyclopedia of all the dialogue you've ever come across like there'll be other there'll be other means of in the game within the game that can help you if you if you're lost right like they like that can be like I, I don't even think a full comprehensive dialogue history is a good way to even solve that problem Make the save file be a memory dump. No, I don't want to. I don't think I want to write these to save files. I, I don't think it's a good idea. different output build per language. I, I don't need to do any of that. I, I've solved the localization. That's already been solved. I'm just trying to make all of these parts work together in a way that will be easy to manage and not super error prone. Like there's the the the, uh, the easiest thing to do. Well, it's not really the easiest, but like what I could do is if I save um instead of the string information, I just save the, like a, a tuple or something of um, the dialogue container resource, a reference to that, and a reference to which string in that I need, then I could, technically speaking, build, uh, I, can, I can generate a dialogue history from that. And so then that way I'd be storing very little information. I could retranslate it at any time. And, and that, would, that would just kind of work. So like, I'm thinking like, maybe that's just the way to do it, but I just don't know if I want that load on the game. Like if someone translates the game and then they open up that thing, then they have to like retranslate all the widgets and recreate it and rebuild. It feels just kind of like super unnecessary load for, for what it is. Um, I think just saving the strings is probably enough and then not saving the history between sessions. <sighs> saving history though. Uh, 
how many languages are you planning to support? Can you translate to all languages when you share the message? Um, no, that would be, a, I think, a bit too much. Uh, but right now, I, I can support any number of languages. There's no limit. Plus one for just a big string dump. Yeah. I mean, I, I technically speaking, I have a lot of options. Um, it's 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 not that the it's not a question of like can I do it or how can I do it. It's it's like what do I want to achieve and what concessions am I willing to make? Um, and I'm not I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted on whether or not I want the history to persist. And the the problem here is that it looks like I have to go all in one way or another. Uh, and then if I want to change it, I can always change it later. But there's there's not a solution that accounts for both, it seems. Um, well, this sort of is. It's just really convoluted. I need to pull the trigger on something. I think the play for now is to take the easy route that can also be easily undone if need be. And I think that is to just store the strings and don't have them persist. Uh, oh shit, wait, 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 fuck, I forgot something. Shit, there's one more requirement. Um, I can't be storing the same thing over and over. Like, if I, if I talk to the same, if I talk to that tree again, repeatedly, do I want, do I want that added over and over? Like, no, I don't think so. And if I want, and if that's the case, then I need to test to see if they're unique or not. Um, and I don't want to test their uniqueness by con checking if the strings are the same, because that's unwieldy. Um, so in that case, I think the best thing, I think the, I think the best thing moving forward is to save the dialogue container, the integer of the string. I think I'll start with that. Yeah. Hello, farming guy. Welcome, welcome. Uh, the the. There, I have I have ways of translating this, the the text. The, the, I've already got like a really really comprehensive localization system. The problem is just that if you want to translate the strings, you need to have the strings unedited. Um, but what I'm what I'm what I might need to do for this history is to to display the strings edited. Um, yeah. So if I save them in a if I just save the strings in the format that I need to display them in the history, then I can't translate them from there because there's no way to look them up in the database because they've been edited. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go with the slow approach. I'm going to save the dialogue containers and just fetch it each time. And then I'll look for a more efficient way to do that later. I think that's the play. Ads. All right. Quick three minute break uh, while the ads play, and then um, ads. ads! We'll start rolling this ball. Okay, cool.
be gone. Also, hi, Jim Bob Creepin. Ads are gone. Thank you very much, Quiet Kaz, for the sub. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you imagine a world without ads? That'd be pretty sick. That'd be pretty sweet. That'd be pretty sweet. All right. So I was during the break. I was writing some notes about of, of my requirements. So I don't want to translate all the history elements each time I show the text. Uh, uh, separate dialogue with dialogue breaks into separate history elements. This is tricky. Dialogue does translate when I switch languages. That would be really nice. And potential to save the dialogue history between each session, sessions, which means I'm saving the resource and dialogue string index references, but not the strings themselves. Um, and this is also necessary anyway, if I want to switch languages, because I need to be able to get the source string from the dialogue and then be able to translate it. And actually, the idea that I've come up with right now is that I do save the dialogue, the, the resource and dialogue string re index reference. From there, whenever a dialogue thingy is displayed, uh, before it's displayed, uh, shit, yeah, hopefully there's a some way I can trigger that when it gets displayed, um, that they update if need be. And being updated if need be means if they're, like they save a cached version of the string that they want to output. That way they only have to fetch that string one time. They only need to translate it one time and then they can output it. And if the locale changes, so if we change language in game, then the, ne if, if the next time they show, if the locale doesn't, the previously translated locale doesn't match with the new one, then they do retranslate re retranslate themselves. And I've done this before. Um, where did I do this? I did this before in, um, or something similar in character descriptors, I believe. Yeah, like this. So if my the translation server locale is different to the current name locale, then I retranslate it. Otherwise, um, I just I just return the cached thing. So if I do something like this, then I think that that's actually kind of okay. Um, the only thing then with this situation is breaking them into multiple history elements if there's a dialogue break. Maybe I just don't fucking do this. Mm, I'm close. I'm close to uh, getting started. Maybe I just don't do this part in the history elements. Because I don't know how I would save that otherwise. Like, if I have like a history element one, which is like dialogue one, one, dialogue one, two, dialogue one, three, but three has a line break, a dialogue break, which means the fourth one is dialogue one, three as well, but it's the second part, you know, part two. <laughs> this is part one. How, how the fuck does that work? And then what happens if we translate it and those parts aren't there? Maybe. Maybe in the history, I don't separate them into multiple dialogues and I just get rid of this thing. So then in the history, that the two dialogues, you know, if something has been separated, just looks like one bigger dialogue. And I think that's probably okay. Yeah, that's actually probably okay. If that's the case, one last thing to check is when we push dialog box here we um, progress populate push dialog we on queue mm. and then where does it go to history Oh, 
this is a can of worms. This is such a mind fuck. I think I need to, uh, the whole dialogue break. I think I need to just, I need to abandon this idea entirely, uh, and potentially revisit and deal with it later. I think I need to get something going. Uh, before then because it's entirely possible that I won't even need it um, But I think right now I need to get something else going and then I can maybe find a way to get this going But I can't think of all of these requirements with this one at the same time I can't I can't I can't do that in my brain. I need to do the others first um, And then see what I can manage with this later if I need to um, I have to ignore this that is just too much to keep in my head at the same time. Bittersweet feelings about Turbo. You explain this very well. Sounds like a fun problem to solve. Thanks. It's going to be nice when it's done. It's going to be nice when it's done. It's just, it's just like di this, like this dialogue shit is like, I'm diving into this in the beginning because I know how much of a headache it, it is and how important it is for the rest of the game. And that when I get this solved up front, it's going to be easier down the line. Um, yeah, but it, it is, it is really, really confusing. It doesn't feel confusing because it's just, it's just text, right? But when you factor in like, all the things you can do with it. It's actually, it's actually, it's, it's actually really, really convoluted. But I have a really good system right now, uh, so far. And, um, so I just need to keep building on it. Um. Okay, so let's just start rolling the ball and we'll see where we end up. First things first, push dialogue. My brain is thinking about the dialogue break. Okay, I need to stop thinking about the dialogue break. I need to figure about figure that out later. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Don't think about it, Jace. Stop thinking. Stop it. Okay, so I want the dialogue history box. How does this work with the engine then? Because I don't know if I want... Do I want to spawn? New ones each time? Maybe. Maybe. Um, in that case, I think I want this to be a... We may have to make a new... UI. History entry. That's yes. Oop. We want it to be a control. This is probably fine. Dialogue history entry. Uh, and in here. We'll probably want um, cache translated string, um, cache translated name, um, this one can maybe be public, public, uh, PG, EPG, EPG character ID, character ID. Uh, 
Um, we'll need like the source string. Um, what, other, what else do I need? I need... Wait, where did it go? Name? Emote? Oh, emote resource. How do we get emotes again? Uh, emotes. No, not here. I've got a helper for this. I forget where it was. Emote. Oh, I don't have a helper for this? Okay, we can do that later then. So the emote could maybe be, yeah, character ID and emote. I think that's probably fine. Emotes, emote. I also don't know if I want these to be public or not. Uh, okay, so with the character ID, emote, source string, we want a private string. Cards, trans, locale, locale, um, yeah. Oh, we need the dialogue container and index. Jesus Christ. Then what I need is um, if I go get uh, public string get current trend, uh, get current no get uh, <sighs> This is a resource, right? No one knows. Okay. Get uh get emote texture. It's not a string, this would be texture to D. Uh we'll want Get name, get uh, dialogue text, translated dialogue text. Yep. This shouldn't be. That can go. Okay, so now if I go if this is null, <sighs> equals. I think I have a 
text helpers. Do I have an emote? No. I swear I had something for emotes. Have I not implemented that yet? Did I just, did I think about implementing it? <laughs> I thought about implementing emotes. Uh, or do I just have like the, um, yeah, I got portrait. Oh, it's this here. Yeah, this is, this is, sorry, so. To do. But I can tap into this then. Uh, in that case, we go back to here. Scripts are... Dialog container, dialog string index. Okay, portraits and the emote will be uh, emote. Like that. If emote does not equal Oh wait, hold up. There might not be a character descriptor. Right. No, this is good. Okay. Good. If uh, string dot is oh, uh, cached translated string. If current translated locale does not equal translation server dot get locale um, or and or <laughs> What's the function called again? a sign that I need to change the function name if I dialogue string Boop. so therefore so this is if the if the locale is different from the currently translated locale or if our cache tra translated string string is null then we translate the string and we set the locale and then we return and then we kind of do the same thing here also this is the wrong function I should go here uh, and here we'll do a similar thing where we translate the name, current translate locale, that's... Ooh. Actually, if a locale changes, we have to change all the text. So private uh, void update uh, translation. This, and this is gonna be the name. Um,
I don't need this character ID. It's kind of nice. Update translations. I think we did it. Holy shit. Pause check and hydrate. Thank you. I was in the zone. Sorry, guys. What happened while I was gone? Um, Silvash, thank you very much for the follow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, stretch goal. Exactly. The, the dialogue break. Yeah. Save check. Thank you. Uh, I didn't actually check my posture. Let's check now. But I did hydrate. Uh, if a dialogue always shows the top of dialogue history, then pushing to the dialogue history would update the dialogue, and the history could implicitly be the translation. Uh, yeah, but that that still doesn't handle all the edge cases, like um, necessarily how that will work in terms of like dialogue breaks if we go down that route, or how to handle the translation change if we change language. Etc. Etc. But also, not all dialogue that gets shown should be going to the history. That's the other thing to consider as well. So, uh, am I sentient? I am now. I wasn't before. I wasn't before, Baldo. How you doing, Happy Potato? I don't know if I said hello, but hello. Um, I'm curious about your <laughs> your Unity pro uh, progress. Did you go to school to learn this, or is it self learned? Uh, I did study game development and programming at university, uh, and then I've. Yeah, then I worked as a game developer for, for a long time. Yeah. Drop the vid in chat. I'll have to check it out after the stream. Yeah, those are some... Uh, yeah, yeah, in Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are some uh, wild situations you were having there with the uh, the physics. Okay, so this actually should work pretty well. The thing here is... Um, <laughs> There'll be like a, a rich text label, probably. Rich text label. Uh, that was Rob. Rob's Game Shack. Thank you very much for following. So this will require this message, this widget here i will require this message and then if we um I don't want to do this. So there needs to be some container for all these entries, right? And then at some point I need to like spawn them and then add them to that container somehow. Um, and when I do that, when I spawn them, I guess they update. But when, when do I update them again? I guess is the question. Or do I spawn them each time I open that thing? But I feel like that's going to be a bit of a hitch. It might just be better to... Um, like update the UI in the background if I just keep that running at all times. And then so when I need to show it, I just like bring it in. I don't have to load the dialogue history messages. That would be really nice. And then at that point, it's only ever. When do I prompt it to get these things? Oh, like on maybe like on. 
on draw or something. Maybe there's like some, maybe there's like some, uh, callback I can use for like if they get shown. I mean, I can't always do something as simple as this. There's probably some better way. Um, where I just go, if. When do I want to update these? Ideally, I update them when we show them. Maybe we just have some function called show and something else holds it, handles it. Public void show, uh, when we do that, we have the, um, Should these manage themselves? Name tag, message. Um, dialog box, texture rect here is here. Right, I think maybe what I should do is to start with, we'll get like a ready, void, ready. And in this case, we'll get the message, text, let's get a uh, dialogue, translated dialogue text. Just do this for now. Name tag dot text. Let's get a uh, name. A 
and then portraits. How did I do this over here? Portrait. Texture. Yeah, all right, we did this already. So texture equals get emote texture. Uh, so when it's on ready, uh, sorry, override, then we, yeah, I think that works pretty well. Cool. If you were a GPT instance, you would say no. That's true. That's true. Luckily, I'm not. Would it be convenient to zoom in slightly to make the text larger? Oh, yeah. Looks pretty small for you guys. It's okay for me if I do it. Jesus. Is that a bit better? Does that help? Uh, okay. Pasta check and hydrate, thank you. Anaruma, much appreciated. <laughs> uh, Laura Friendly, thank you very much for the follow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, cool. So let's um, build this here. Let's make uh, some kind of UI. Your scenes UI. Uh, so I'll need like a dialogue history. Dialogue history. We may need a script for this as well. I'm not sure. User interface. And this will have a container. V box container. Uh, this will be Let's say it's like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably need another script. this is creating a resource. No, not resource. How do I make this a script? Here we are. UI. Scripts. UI. PG dialogue history. Control. Sure. Hey, not bad. Um, okay. So, on ready, we'll make this visible. It goes false, so we'll hide it. Um, I don't know if I really need this at the moment. Public void show history, or just show, I guess. And when we do that, um, visible equals true, I guess. Um, I mean, this is probably easier if I just do this. Oh, that was my phone. We don't really need this in that case. Show hide, we'll need that as well. Uh, Cause there might be some other functionality in here too. Uh, maybe we need to public void add history element. And this will be a PG dial UI 
dialogue history entry <laughs> entry into the history uh currently the history is being stored in game master and maybe it won't be and instead there'll be a dialogue history Wait, did I call this PG UI dialogue history? Did I not? I thought I did. I didn't. Uh, Gum Games, GG, thank you very much for the follow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to add a new history element. The easiest way would just be to spawn. Yeah. The most efficient way would be to use what's already there if we haven't filled up and then like reposition stuff. And maybe that's something I can do later. But I think for the moment, it might just be better. Add history element. What does it need? What does the history entry need? I think it just needs dialogue container and index. I don't even think it needs the emotes. Wait. Description. Wait. I don't even think we need this. I can get this from... So then all I need is the dialogue container and dialogue string index. That's pretty nice. In which case here, we can just do PG dialogue container. Just like this. And then I can spawn a new thing in this folder, right? So um, uh, node control, base class control. Um, spawn, <laughs> spawn location, I don't know. And then here I want to add a new history entry. We good going, we are, absolutely. Which unity is this? It's, it's the, uh, it's unity 10.9. At least you aren't using the weird version of Python they have in this GD script. I mean, it, look, it looks okay. What kind of game do you develop? There's a, a command called about game, which gives all the information that's out there. Yeah, exactly. Top down pixel game. Alrighty then. Uh, and then if we go to game master, we can get these, get that out of there, put this into history, because that's what is relevant here. Wait, which collection? That one, right? Yep. Um, okay, we have the history. Cool. Game master. Where were we referencing? Dialogue history. Push dialogue history. <laughs> 
Dialogue string. Jesus Christ. Requesting an accent. German. You want the German accent? Yo, by the way, if you guys don't know, I'm really, really good at accents. All right. You want the German accent? Here it comes. German accent coming right at you. Here it goes. Howdy, partner. My name's Jason. I was born and raised in Germany. Vominos. <laughs> Sheer disappointment. Oh my god. It's like I'm in Berlin. Exactly. Uh, amazing. Do you need to update the class name? Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's the sheer the sheer disappointment as I take the channel points. That always makes me kind of laugh. I, I mean, not I mean, not a disappointment. It's uh, it's actually very impressive. I would I would think, yeah. Now to a northern German accent. Hey, I don't do accents for free, right? All right. I got I got to pay I got to pay my my rent here, right? And I pay them in channel points. That's how it works here in Sweden. The New Zealand accidentally popped through a minute ago. I mean, maybe. I thought I rated a good German streamer. <laughs> I pay them in gems. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. All right. So this then is PG Dialogue Container. I hate passing these things around. It's index. And then here, do we have my... I haven't made a... Dialogue History. Oh boy! Sir underscore Keen gifted Muglin a subscription. Sir underscore Keen gifted a oh. tier one sub to Muglin. Sir Kane, thank you very much for the tier one sub for gifting it to uh to Muglin. Thank you very much. Enjoy your uh emotes, Muglin, and ad free viewing. Enjoy, enjoy. Eastern German accent, do Bavarian accent. I mean, yeah, look, you gotta you gotta pay the gems. You gotta pay the gems. Now we know why the written dialogue code is so important. Yeah, absolutely. It's to facilitate, you know, because the accents are too good. Maybe people, you know, if I do voice acting, people won't know. Um, they might not be able to understand it if the accent's too good. Yeah, I don't know. Computer generated voice, that's kind of strange. Okay, 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 okay. Bam, well, bam dot uh add history element dialogue container index all right so this is going to break shit elsewhere get dialogue history wait do i do this anywhere no <laughs> delete you're out of here that's a, a handy programming tip. If uh, there's an error, like here, I'm just teaching you guys this, right? Um, if you ever have like an error while you're working on something, you just, <laughs> just delete it. It's gone. It's just gone. You have to worry about it Bum, 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 bum. Block comment. Yeah, just do block comment. Yeah. In code, you spell it color or color uh, without the U in code. Yeah. Accent random function. <laughs> How to partner. That saves so much troubleshooting time. Yeah, I mean, just delete everything. There'll be no bugs. Delete all code until it stops complaining. Exactly. You may not have the functionality you want, but this is your decision. You can choose. You can weigh those options up. You know, do I... What do I want more? No bugs or functionality? 
And if you want no bugs more than anything, I mean, the solution is very easy. I can make this private, maybe. Oh. We'll see. We'll see if we need these. Uh, add history on Okay, so this is something that I'm not uh, super, 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 super. Um, this is some Godot stuff that I'm really kind of weird about. So, uh, do I want packed scene? Um, and this would be like um, I want the dialogue history entry scene and I could set that in the engine and then I is it resource loader dot load Oh, do I not? Oh, wait. How does this work? Dot instantiate? Ah, okay. There's a node. Posture check and hydrate. Posture was actually not complete ass right now. That's kind of nice. But I will hydrate. <laughs> the game is about guessing what the game is being <laughs> being made. Exactly. We're actually playing it right now. True. Madux, thank you very much for the follow. That's right. That's right. I have a Discord, folks. We like to chat in between stuff. We talk about devs sometimes. We talk about games. A lot of people talking about Palea and Satisfactory there. Um, yeah. Hang out between streams. Also, actually, holy shit. Um, I'll have to put like an announcement on the Discord, but I may switch stream schedule on Tuesdays to go back one hour and start at noon. So it doesn't uh, overlap with the satisfactory stream as much because I know that there's like a lot of shared people there. So uh, I might be moving that a little earlier. Okay. Uh, but, you know, follow on Discord. Join Discord. You get notified, notified if you want. Uh, yeah. Cool. Oh, no. I deleted the code that handled the queue length. That's okay. We can write it again. Uh, if history queue dot count is greater than max dialogue entry histories, then history queue dot DQ, I guess. That's good. Uh, now, in this case here, I need to... Do I... Is it entry dot set parent? I always... I never remember this shit. Parent. Find parent. Owner. Owner. <laughs> this. Nope. That. Isn't it like a child? Get child. Move child. Oh, 
Was it like this? Add child. But this is for some other shit. I don't know if I need to do this kind of stuff here. Owner? I don't know if I need to do that or not. I guess we'll find out. We'll see how it goes. We will see how it goes. Uh, on cue. Alright. Nice! No errors on the build? We'll take that. I think most of the stuff is sort of set up here. So if I, here, spawn location, here, dialogue history entry, scene. Oh, I don't have a dialogue history entry scene yet, okay. Scene. Um, scripts, UI, dialogue history entry, load. Okay, relax. Here we are. So then this needs a rich text label. It will need a regular label. And it will need a texture rect. I, I mean, I basically want to copy this. I largely want to copy this. Sort of. Without that. Okay, so let's see. Message container, margin container. So entry here. <laughs> Uh, Wyram, thank you very much for the follow. Also, Jordan. Jordan to Delta, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, Michael. Hello. Uh, you pumped for Todd Howard Starfield? Uh, me? No, not so much. Not, not super interested in it, I think. Uh, I, I might look into it some more, but I haven't been, I haven't been super pumped for it or anything. <clears throat> I actually have uh, Armored Core 6 downloaded and uh, on my PS5, so I'm looking forward to playing that. But I'm also playing um, Owlboy right now on Switch, and that's really fun. I've also been playing um, some Power Wash as well. I've been settling into that. I know I did like a lot of Power Wash stuff doing the Final Fantasy um, DLC stuff on stream, and so I'd like to do that on stream again at some point. Um, but I've been working through the main story of Power Wash. It's been 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 fun. The main career. Hey, Thor uh, Thoride, hello. Is there a parent overload in Instantiate? That's Unity speak though. Uh, I don't think it would in this case because the thing that I instantiated is not necessarily something that has to be in a tree, I think. So I don't know if that function would have like a, like an automatically add to parent overload. Let's, let's take a look though. Instantiate. Yeah, I don't think so. Resource, yeah, I'm not sure. The root node. Where does it, where does it instantiate to? Does it automatically instantiate beneath the current object, maybe? I'm not sure. Hmm, not sure. We'll find out. Um, okay. I'm really, really, really not good at this UI stuff. 
Um, okay, so I'll need um, some kind of organization thing. Um, it might be a vertical box and then a horizontal box, potentially, I think. So, vert vertical box, V box, and then everything can go in there. Uh, and then here, there's a H box. And in here, we have the dialogue message and the portrait. Oh shit. Whoa, we're 30 seconds into ads. Holy cow. Okay. Uh two and a half minute break. See you guys soon. Stretch, get some water. We are back. We are back, folks. Welcome back. That's right. We are back. Um. Okay. Stylog history. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. The way this stretches is that this is on top of everything. Okay. So if I add here, nine patch. Nine patch. Nine patch rectum. That's what it's look, that's just what it's called. Alright. That's what it's short for. What am I gonna do? Textures, no. Art dialogue box, I think is the one that I want. Uh the region for this 
8. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. Edit region. Go away. Patch margin. 8, 8, 8, 8. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Good o. <laughs> hey, Pancake. <laughs> yes, good o. Uh, righty then. So we want it to maybe, maybe stretch as far as it can. Like this. Um, but we might want to anchor it at the top. Like, like this. Like this. Um, we'll probably need. You're a giving me a fuckle. True. <laughs> What's that? Dizzy. <laughs> Uh, transform. Is there like a minimum here? Minimum. Let's get, this will probably need some sort of like minimum. No, it probably doesn't actually. What it does need is it needs a margin, folks. It needs a margin container. Uh, this also probably stretches to the max of that. Is there a padding container? Padding. Nope. I feel like... I don't know this shit works. Name tag, um, someone's name, Dizzy's. You're in the game now. Um, and the message will be the multi line. Portrait can be smiley. Okay. So this shit should be scaling to the inside, but I don't remember how I did that. Here, stretch, maybe. Wait, where, where, here, axis stretch? So wait, this is set to stretch. Why is it not stretching? How did I do that here? Did I set a... No, I didn't set a minimum height. I did set a height though. Is that what this is? Oh. How do I make this stretch to the contents though? Maybe this is something I just need to look into later. I don't think I should get too caught up on this right now. Okay, so let's just give just just give this a hype for now. This is this big. Uh, the text, theme overrides, colors. The message, theme overrides, colors. This needs to, 
Um, fit content? No. Enabled. This is this horizontal box is this long. It's got a portrait in it and then a message that this should be. Layout. Oh, weird. Found it. This margin container. Oh, is that how this works? I mean, that's an entry. And then what would happen is if we have a scene in theory, maybe this could have like a panel just so we can actually visualize it. Can't see anything. Pretty good panel, not gonna lie. Where is it? Is this being weird? Oh, it's hidden. God, I'm so dumb. Uh, that's a big oof. Okay, here we are. So we'll make this the size of the left here. We'll make it this big. Sure, whatever. And then we spawn a history entry. Copain. <laughs> Aw. Okay, wait. This needs to be like that. Oh! And then if we did another history entry. Why are these? Oh dear. Why are these on top of each other? These don't have a height to them. Which is why, but why don't they have a height? Um, history entry. Hmm. How's the UI workflow in Godot? I'm eternally being irritated by the Unity one. Uh, UI is irritating in everything. <laughs> uh, I haven't delved uh, super, super deep into the UI so far. Uh, but right now, um, uh, from what I've seen so far, it seems fairly comparable to some other things. Um, I really liked Unreal Engine's UI system, actually. Um, 
that was actually incredibly good. But it seems like so far from what I've seen, um, this UI system kind of, you, you know, you can kind of do what you want with it. Um, and they seem to have like some pretty good focus stuff as well. So like, um, you know, if you're, if you're focused on a certain thing, from what I've seen, I haven't tried it yet, like this here. You can assign what will be left, top, right, and bottom. So if I press up on a keypad or something, you know, where should it go? That's what I imagine this to be. I remember way back when, when I used Unity, <clears throat> I had to, I wrote like a bunch of like extra UI stuff for myself to make this kind of process easier. Uh, I think they've since added that to Unity. Um, but yeah, it seems okay. I'm just, I'm just like not super experienced um, with this system. So I'm, I'm a little stuck right now, but Hmm. Okay, so this thing is full wrecked. Full wrecked them. So it shouldn't be. It should just be top. But if we do top, it doesn't have a height. Should expand? How do I make this? How the fuck do I? Change type. Maybe control can't do that because control is like the base type. Maybe it should be like a um, container. Maybe this nine patch rec thing should be the, the root. Maybe it should be the root. Maybe that's the problem. Can I like move this? I can't. Oh, geez. All right. Well, let's get rid of this. Let's do go here. Attach. Scripts UI history entry. Okay, and the message will be this, name tag will be here, portrait will be here. Um, dialogue history is this. Okay, <laughs> this is something. Uh, okay. How's the project going? It's going all right. Making progress. Making progress, yeah. Super impressed by Godot. So many open source projects don't look like that. That's true. Yeah, it's really, really good, especially for an open source thing. Yeah, it's super nice. Pretty good. Yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy working in it. Why doesn't this stretch when it does here? Have I, oh, have I given this a height here? I think I have, but how do I, how do I make the stretch to the contents? How do I make the other things? This is the full. <laughs> Decotail, thank you very much for the follow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Why? Uh. 
I mean, it seems to me that like what I need to do is just give a, a minimum, but then it's it's still not stretching. But maybe I can just add the minimum and then figure it out later. Top wide. I feel like that's right. Size, we have a size. Where's the minimum? Custom minimum. Control layout. Control layout, custom minimum. 168, there. Okay. Okay, this is, yeah, whatever. This will do for now, but I need to solve this later. So if we add these history elements, it's gonna be like that. Now this, I want there to be scroll. Um, how do we make... How do I make this scrollable? Maybe it doesn't automatically. Oh. We had a bunch of these in. What happens? So this should probably clip the contents. What the hell? Why is this up here? Anchor, lay on the position, anchors. Should clip contents, but it doesn't seem to be. Well, it does seem to be. Well, it's resize. Okay, wait, this V box is resizing, but I don't want it to resize. make it smaller. Maybe I don't want it to, maybe I want this to clip the contents. Yeah, like that. And this could have a scroll thing. Doesn't really... Scroll bar. Um, layouts. Top right.
I don't know about this right now. I think I need to look into this a little later. But I think what I should probably try to do is just try get the menu to show. And populate these. It's close enough to at least prove the concept, I think. Yes. Uh, entry scene. That's the <laughs> entry. Boom. Okay. Um, but then we have our game master. That was Slamu. Thank you very much for the follow. Dialogue container. And this one will be dialogue history. But then we'll hide it initially. We'll also give the ordering of this to be above dialogue container. So if the ordering for this is zero. Maybe it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll leave that for now. And then I can make that change later if we see that the order of the uh, UI elements aren't any good. Uh, okay. Um, but that might mean I need to assign the dialogue history UI here. Carbol current level container is unassigned. unassigned. That's kind of strange. Uh, okay. So those are technically hooked up. <laughs> Tomahawk Killer, thank you very much for the follow. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, so game master here. Um, we can make this. Yeah, do you, debug action. Don't need any of this. Um, if dialogue history UI dot visible, or we could just do a toggle thing for now. For now, um, This should technically work. This should technically work. All right, first test, first test, folks. First test. Hold, hold chat, hold. Pause champ. All right, I'm gonna show and hide it. There it is. This is a <laughs> scroll bar that doesn't do anything. All right, so there's, there's no history, okay? No history. We can show and hide it. Now. <laughs> well, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> we got we got two errors. <laughs> We got a couple of errors here. Um, Ona must be interested in tree. Yeah, this is the stupid shit that I had before. Yeah, this is the shit that I had to deal with that one time before. Um, <laughs> that's right here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, game master. No. Uh, dialogue history. This one. Add child, right? Yep, okay. Add child. Could be this. And then it's 
This is owner equals that thing for some reason. This was a rabbit hole that I fell down once upon a time that I still don't understand. Let's see if this works. All right. Test number two. We got errors. Oh! Ooh, we have something, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We have something. We have the locale. It's not It's not the message by any means. Wait. You're giving me a fuckle. Oh, there is more. I can't scroll, but... It's something. It's something! Make it a little smaller. Um, we can maybe make this text a little smaller. Well, we didn't even see any text. Anyway, a lot of errors. Page of text to helpers. Dialogue stream. Try to get string from null dialogue. Interesting. Well, good. Oh, that sounds like a you problem. All right. It sounds like a you problem. Uh, cool. So let's uh, recreate that. Something better than nothing. In this case, I'll take it. All right. Here are my errors. Definitely this one. Shouldn't be getting null containers. Um, okay. Okay, in this case we did. <sighs> Where did we come from? Update translations, dialogue container. Okay. Oh. Oh, I'm actually really dumb. Actually dumb. Uh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't set any of this. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is adding to the tree, this dot. Um, message, name, tag, nope. Dialog container and dialog string index. Dialog container equals dialog container. And tree dot dialog string index equals index. I wonder if I could, if I could be so bold, if I may, if I may be so cheeky as to <laughs> update the string as I go. This is ready. Oh, I wonder if this happens the next frame or if it happens right here. I guess we're going to find out. Um, yeah, maybe we should just do this here. Make that public. When we create it, we'll also do entry.updateTranslations. 
Or, why would I do that here? I should just do it in, um... <laughs> make that private again. Do it here. Alright, here we go. Skvesh, thank you very much for the follow. And Love, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We can open and close this whenever, which is good. I do want that. Um, did we get errors? We did. Okay, it looks like it happens right away. In that case, mm, in that case, I wonder if I can do, I got a bunch of options here, but it would be sick if I could, uh, it doesn't look like I can. Wait, when does ready get called? Is it when it's added to the tree? If so, I could just... Oh, jeez. Can I just... Ready. Sure, here. In it calls. If it's not added to the tree, then this won't happen, right? So I think like the easiest solution is probably just this. Right? Does this just magically work? Oh, we didn't hit the uh, breakpoint. Oh, we're getting a little closer. <laughs> I'm gonna face this time. We're getting there. Errors? No errors. Okay, cool. So, uh, <laughs> obviously, here, this is the problem. So, uh, get cache translated name. Text needs to be the translated string. And that should do it. Oh, look, there's the first one. It's good. It even has the scroll bar here. Interesting. And then there's the next one. Should maybe be reversed. Right? You would want the latest thing at the top, I assume. Well, whatever. Who cares? There it is. We have dialogue history. I can do this over and over. And I mean, I don't want it to be able to enter the same things over and over, but there it is. There it is. I think also right now I can walk around, which is no good, but... It works! Does game have golf in it yet? Soon, 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 soon. Dimples dev content. Oh yeah! Welcome, welcome. Alright, so that is... That is something. That really is something, actually. Um, is 
or controller. Uh, Barnacle Bob, thank you so much for the follow. Thank you. Uh, okay, so. Let's see here. Is dialogue showing? I mean, I could just do. I mean, this is a bit hacky. But I think I need a more robust solution for that later anyway. Okay, that is not what I meant to do. Uh, so now I shouldn't be able to <laughs> move with this open. True. I might still be able to interact, though. Nope. Okay. That's largely handled. Uh, let's switch them around so that uh, the latest thing is at the... Is at the top. Force readable name. How do I? Um. How do I, like, is it like move, move child? Move to front. What's this? Nope. Moves the child to a different index. Sure. Like this? Will that work? So now it's, oops. Here. Oh. Why doesn't it say still a tree? Because there's no picture, I wonder. Secret golf level confirmed. Not so secret golf level. Um, let's test this. This, if this portrait is gone. Yeah, like, what the fuck? The text disappears. Where's the text? Oh, geez, weird. Why does this not have a size? Oh my god, I have to deal with this. Jeez. How do I... Um, why? Don't... Why? Not be as big as your text? Oh, that's why. Okay. Now this should work. There it is. Um, what this also means is, if I switch to Japanese... Okay, it's adding the Japanese string, that's cool. But the previous ones aren't updating. Um, why? Uh, I could have... I could just have them always checking. I could just have a process here. It might be better in the end for me that like when the user changes the locale that I just trigger some function that goes and updates these instead of them all, all always checking. But I mean, I think this is probably okay to do as well. What could be even better is if I have this check if the lo locale changes and if it does, then it triggers an update on all the other... Yeah, maybe that's better, because then there's only one thing ticking. But maybe the other things tick anyway. But then they'd each be checking. No, we should do it this way. Mm. 
Uh, process. With any luck, these should be able to translate in real time, like with the widgets even open. So let's do this. Okay, didn't work. It's pretty good. All right, didn't work. Didn't work at all. That's pretty. That's pretty. Pretty sick, if you ask me. <laughs> Does that mean it's not a treat? It's not, unfortunately. Hello, Chirikai. <laughs> hmm, that's kind of interesting. Uh, dessert, des dessert ice, desert ice. Hello, thank you very much for the follow. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so this should be running, right? Yeah, it is. All right, this should trigger if I change the language it does this has two things in it let's go in there Oh, I'm not applying the text. That makes sense. I need to do this shit. functions are kind of fucking useless because I feel like I'm only ever going to use these here. Well, it is what it is, I guess. Um... Okay, the portrait one seems like it's actually also useless. Um... String info. Oh, jeez. Okay, the portrait one can stay. Portrait one can stay. That one's okay. Uh, well, if we're updating the translations, the portrait shouldn't change. Like that, maybe. Uh, okay, let's give it a whirl. Give it a whirl. OK. 
Okay. Now if I translate. Damn it. Oh, translate back. Oh, oh, oh. Not bad. Ease. Nice. How's game dev going today? Uh, it's some tough stuff that I'm working with today. It's uh, it's beating the shit out of my brain, but we're moving forward. We're moving forward. Uh, making progress, actually. So. Okay. Um, if we look at my little list of requirements that I was working on. All history elements each time I show the text. Good. I'm not doing that. I only translate them every time I switch the text. Um, and then when I first add them, then I then I add, then I tr translate. So that's not too bad. Uh, dialogue does translate when I switch language. It does do that. Potential to save dialogue history between sessions. This is the potential is there. Yes, but I have no save system yet. But right now, all I need to save for these kind of things um, is these history entries, and all I need to save from this is. These two, these two values. That's it. And that makes saving pretty reasonable because now I, it's just, it's just a, uh, well, it's a resource, right? Yes. Okay. So this is just a reference to a resource that's small because it's a reference and then it's just an integer. So that's all I need to save. I just need to save a reference and an integer. Um, for every queue thing, that makes way more sense if I wanted my history to persist between sessions. So that's a potential. If I want that, I think that's very, very much within reach. We're not going to talk about this one. That's for another day. Uh, the UI is still pretty janky. Um, there's no, the things that are kind of jank that I need to solve right now is that these don't, I want these to size to the content. So I don't want there to ever be any, wait, is it sizing to the content now? There was something I changed. Unable to write? All right, well. What the, What does this say? Safe save failed. This may be a permissions problem, but also may happen because you're running a paranoid antivirus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it might happen. Because of that reason. Could be. Could be. Um, so right now I have like a, a minimum height, right? Does this still work? It does not. <sighs> also, actually, this is kind of weird. Maybe... I can solve this later. Maybe I actually want the portrait to take up the whole box and then the name be next to it. I think that makes more sense. If that's the case, the way that would work is if I put this here, um, the portrait, put that there, put this here.
this should expand like that. Expand like that. Why doesn't this work? Why? Why, why, why? Fixed it. Uh. Custom. Fill. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why this doesn't work. I have to look into it later. Um, it's not the worst that, uh, well, it's kind of bad if these don't. Yeah. Like that's okay, but if the, see, the text goes longer, then it would it would need to stretch down, but it's not doing that. That's okay for now. Um, you know, the two things that I need is that I need the, the entry to resize to the contents. The other thing that I need is the um, this whole vertical box to be a, be scrollable. That's the other thing that I need. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fist TV, thank you very much for the follow. Much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, let me see here. Let's see, Godot. Scroll container. Scroll container. Is that a thing? Create scroll on VBox container. Oh, Jesus Christ! So bright. Holy cow! Use a scroll container. Scroll container's child. Okay. I mean, we can try it. We can try a scroll container. I'm willing. Scroll container. New technology unlocked. Um. Lay out this thing. Okay. this 
What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Just clicking r random things. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh my god, the ads are here! The ads are here! Ads! Okay. Ads! I'm gonna take a quick three minute break, and when we get back, we'll see if this scroll container works. Okay, see you guys see you in a few minutes. Stretch your legs, get some water. Take care, see you soon. Welcome back, everybody. Ad break is over. Fist TV with a lurk. Thank you for the lurk. Much appreciated. Lurking helps. Helps a bunch. Helps a lot. Thanks. Um, okay. So let's let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. There's no scroll box there, and it doesn't need to be. Okay, maybe now. Oh, we got a scroll box. Oh, dude! Okay. That's good. That's a very important part of this feature. Uh, the other important part of this feature is now that we have a scroll box... Um... I need to be able to control it using uh, um, like controller or keyboard and not just a mouse wheel. And back from the store, got Bobo. Nice. What did you miss? This is what you missed. This is what you missed, Vilsol. All right. I'm going to add a bunch of dialogue to the history. Bam. There's the history. And we have scrolling in the history and we have translating live 
There you go. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Um, so now I want to be able to scroll using inputs. Uh, and this I've done before with my dialog box here. Basically these two lines here. So if we take that, Uh, and we put it in here. We've got process, which is good. So we can do that here now. We need the vertical scroll box. Message dot get scroll bar from rich text label, right? Okay, but that's not gonna work. Uh, in this case, we want private scroll container uh, vertical scroll uh, scroll Jesus vertical scroll oh it's like I hear I hear rain and I looked outside I see blue sky and I'm like no but I hear rain and then I look at the window and there's rain on the window where the fuck is this rain coming from <laughs> I'm so confused right now. There's a bug in the code. It's not reading. I mean, it might be, but. I don't know. I just make games. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jay, look at this. Yeah, good one. Alright, you know what? For sanity's sake, I'm gonna do... I'm gonna do the unthinkable here. Okay, you know what? This is how this works. <laughs> this gets called scroll. Actually, this might not work because this 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 shit here. Well, mm. hmm. We'll need scroll speed. Float. <sighs> What's the scroll speed here? It's time the party! Holy shit. <laughs> Holy crap, 36 ra Raiders, welcome! Skash Kitsune! Hello, foxes are pouncing on my stream. Oh no, they're coming. Ah! Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How was your stream? Hope you had a good one. Welcome. That's good. The shit out of me. Holy crap. Holy cow. Scroll. Oh, you know what? We can go back to our shitty name. Um, vertical scroll container because this will actually be scroll bar Don't get scroll oh, that all makes sense and page does make sense actually this is all correct this is all correct amundo If uh, visible, right? that scroll active what 
What does this do? It was good. Nice. Good, good, good. How's mine? Well, it's going all right. It's going all right. Working on some tough stuff today. It's beating the shit out of my brain, but uh, making some pretty good progress regardless, which is nice. Yeah. Well, this is surreal. Not seeing you talk about satisfactory. Yeah. Would you, would you believe it? <laughs> would you believe it? Yeah. Still has the beanie though. So everything's fine. Exactly. Exactly. I'm not an imposter. What type of game is it? It is a... Uh... Top secret. Well, about about game. There it is. This is all the information about the game that's out there. Uh, top down pixel art game. That's pretty much it. Now looking at your code, I know why I'm having problems with satisfactory. Nice. Uh, to be fair, I didn't program satisfactory for the past four years, so can't can't pin it on me, bucko. How do I check to see if the scroll bar of a scroll container is active? Uh, scroll bar. Can I just do like scroll bar dot visible or something? Custom scrolling emitted when the scroll bar is being scrolled. No. Um, scroll bar. Grabber. <laughs> TJ Code, thank you very much for the follow. Much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's just style stuff. Okay, okay. Scroll container. Give me the information I need. Scroll container. Whoop. Scroll container. Scroll mode. Scrolling disabled. Scroll bar will be invisible. Auto scrolling enable. Okay. Follow focus. Scroll mode. Jeez, wait, how do I check if... Um... Can I, is, is it as crazy as going? Scroll bar, visible, is this okay? Uh, so if the history container is visible and if the scroll bar is visible, then we use these inputs. Um, but I need some other way to disable inputs or to prioritize its input. Um, No, no, actually, this is fine. All I need to do is go to dialog box. Else if um, gets dialog. That is dialog history open. Di dial. Make this function. So basically don't 
do that scrolling when dialogue history is open. Do it when, okay, so let's do a build here. Um, I think this works. I think I have all the pieces in place here. Uh, and that's, you know, every time I've said that, that's worked out perfectly. So here I have a scroll box, which I can control with keyboard, mouse wheel. And then if I open up this, I can know, oh, we are <laughs> erroring at the wazoo. We have 300 errors here. <laughs> Null reference exception. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. It's this here. Scroll container. Boom. Forgot to link those up. Okay. No more errors. Good. And this is good, so I can't scroll anymore in the dialog box because this history is open, which is good. Right? So let's add a bunch of history. Now we have this, I can scroll, keyboard. Oh, here we are. I mean, the scrolling needs to be a bit quicker, but yeah, works. Controller, the controller's not plugged in, Never mind. Should work. Uh, okay, so now if I open this here, I'm... okay, every time this opens, I need to send this to the very top. That's actually something I need to do. But yeah, so I can't scroll down here in the dialog anymore, but I can here. Wait, actually, that's interesting. Why can't I scroll here? It's good. I want that's a good thing, but I didn't make it so that I couldn't do it with my mouse. So the focus must be here somehow. But the fact that that's happening and I don't really, I, I didn't do it, means I don't understand something. Uh, but yeah, this I guess this is pretty good. Close that. Now I can do this this one again. Nice. So let's up the speed of the dialog history scrolling, probably like twice as much. Maybe whenever we show the dialog, we scroll up. Um, where do I do that again? I forgot. Oh, in here. Oh yeah, this is just this thing. So <clears throat> this is why we need a public uh, void show history public void uh, hide history visible equals true true visible equals false here we want the scroll bar value to be zero. So we're at the top. That should be enough. And then in here, we can say uh, if not visible hide history else Show <laughs> What is this? I've never done that before. <laughs> Quick hide it before anyone sees. No one clip it. Clip it, don't no, clip it, alright? Just let it go, alright? Just let it go. Okay. <laughs> I think it's time to stop.
No, it's fine. All right, go, 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 go. Okay. Moves a bit quicker now. That's good. Might need to be a bit quicker still. Um, and then if I close this and then open it again, it should be at the top. It is. Good. <clears throat> That's pretty good. Now, the only thing left is... I want to make sure that I'm not duplicating stuff. Um, although that has been helpful for the testing, but I want to I want to not duplicate stuff. <clears throat> so, what I can probably do is where I on where I push. Where I push, uh, here, push dialog history. We add a history element. That's fine. In here, I need to make sure. That there is no. History, whatever. In, um, can I use entry here? Does that work? We'll see if it complains. Yeah, it might. It might. We'll see. We'll see. Because <clears throat> I'm thinking that maybe this just exists within this block. We'll see. If. So I want to see if, Jeez like, whoop, Mr. Taco with the 200 bits. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you, Taco. Hope you're doing well. Hello, hello. Entry <laughs> in B. Listen, Vilsol. Thank you very much, Taco. And uh, thanks for the follow, Blood Blood Ravage. Thank you very much. <laughs> Speed should increase based on how long you hold the scroll button. Yeah, it could, could have something like that. It could be a nice quality of life. The tab equals 37 spaces, really. That's pretty good. <laughs> Where's the not knowing uh, why something's broken is knowing why something works? Yes. Um, how's it going, Bacon Bits? Cool stream, man. I'm glad you, glad you like it. Thank you very much. That's literally me when I develop if white noise. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, Tucker. Thank you. Thank you. May I ask, how did you manage to show these outliney things around the game? These game objects? Yeah, th that was uh, an entire journey. Um, <clears throat> I'll show it to you in a moment. DJ code. If I forget, remind me, okay? Because I, I want to show you. Um, so right now, the thing that I'm in my brain... First thing is I, I need to just see if this entry already exists. And if it does, one would think don't add it again. But maybe I should add it again. And then maybe I should remove it from where it was. Or more efficiently, take it from where it was and put it to the top. Now, in queues, that generally doesn't work. Which then begs the question, should this be a queue? And maybe it shouldn't be a queue. Because why does it need to be a queue? Um when the queue actually kind of happens.
Oh, there's a couple things missing here. Okay, I need to write this down real quick. Uh, if exists reposition, consider list and not queue. Delete. Uh, last child when over limits. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Yeah, there's not really much of a, a need for there to be a for this to be a well, well actually there is a need no not really not really it doesn't need to be a queue if i'm going to be repositioning things i don't think it should be a queue it's just a list but it'll be an ordered list yeah so i think i'll switch away from a, a queue yeah Uh, okay, so the, the outline thing, let me just go over that real quick. Um, so in Godot, for whatever reason, there aren't really great debug draw things. Like what you can see here, these squares, these lines. See this line like follows me. There aren't actually really good de debug draw things, right? There are functions to draw. There are functions to draw in Godot, and that's what I'm using. I'm using those to draw, but whenever you want to draw something, you have to do it in the draw call. Right? You have to do it in here. And then if I were to draw here, whatever I draw is going to be a child of this element for some reason, right? Or, I mean, not necessarily for some reason. Maybe that's a good thing if you actually want to draw for, like, actual gameplay reasons but if you want to just do a debug draw where you just want to like say draw a thing on the screen from here to there just so i can diagnose things um there's not really a very convenient way to do that because yeah like i said things have to happen in the draw call you can't do those draw calls for those elements anywhere else in your code and that's inconvenient it adds extra steps in your mind if you want to debug something um and then like the fact that it's local to the thing calling it is kind of weird too because maybe you don't really want it to be local to the thing that's calling it of course, you can do the math to solve that, but like the point of like debug draw stuff is to quickly draw stuff so you can keep your mind on track of what you're doing. So I've actually uh, created a bunch of uh, debug draw. Uh, I created a debug draw here uh, class. <clears throat> actually, don't, if anyone ever wants this, I can just give it to you and you can add it to your thing as an auto load. And it should probably just work. I could maybe make this more distributable. And so basically, it's just a class that um, I've created a bunch of different interfaces for different kinds of shapes that contain certain data. Um, and and then like uh, and it's pretty easy to extend. And then basically, what I do is from wherever, like I've got these helper functions. So if I go to main character here, I just go debug draw rectangle. Or debug draw polyline or line or circle uh, and then I just pass in the values and then it just works it pushes those requests to a queue and then the um, debug drawer ends up drawing it it goes through that queue and it draws it on its draw call and it's at you know a zero zero position um, and then it also just does all the stuff in yeah it's just kind of like global coordinates um, so that's kind of how I end up how I ended up doing that. So I made a helper class to do that. Now I added um, some extra things. So if I ever want to add extra shapes, I just need to add, extend the um, enum and then come in here and just call the new the new shape that I want to do um, and then make helper functions for it. I made some other helper functions and helper overload <laughs> for it too, um, where, <clears throat> for example, if I want to draw a rectangle around a sprite, I can just pass the sprite in and the helper function figures out where that rectangle should be based on the sprite's bounds and scale. Um, so that's really, really convenient. And if I want to do that around a collision, I could just pass in a collision. It could be a collision polygon. It can be a other collision. Uh, I can pass a collision polygon in and it will trace the the polygon uh, and and draw that polyline for the whole thing. And then same with uh, lines as well. So it's just a bunch of helper stuff that I made basically. <clears throat> so you have to do what unity does i mean 
Mo like Unreal does it as well. Unreal has like some pretty good debug draw stuff too. And it's something that's kind of important for me as a programmer. So, it's, so it did surprise me that it, it didn't have like an automatic support for this. Uh, so I had to, yeah, I had to go through and do some of that. My solution is pretty clever. Gonna steal my idea, sure. If you um, if you would if you would like to just take this, uh, I can I can give it to you. If you join the Discord and ask for it, I can uh, hit you up there. But <clears throat> if you want to just roll your own, you can do that too. But uh, so basically, what this does is I think it's uh, there's in in Godot there's like a an auto load, yeah, and I just auto load my debug drawer, which is the script I think, yeah, and that's all I have to do. And it auto I think it automatically spawns a debug drawer um, element somewhere. I forget where it spawns it. Yeah, it just spawns this thing here. And it kind of just handles everything. <clears throat> 20 minutes, Jace. What is a man to do? <laughs> You're excited about Starfield? Nice, Norky. I hope you enjoy it. That's really cool. Got to say your code is clean. Thank you. Thank you. It works for me. Uh, where was I? What was I doing? I, I I made my notes first, though. That was good. I'm glad that I did that. Um, where are we? I cannot wait until all this <laughs> dialogue shit is over. I cannot wait. Oh, man, it's going to be good. All right. We don't want to queue anymore. I think I want to list. Uh, history, this can still, it's still effectively a queue, so I, I don't mind the name being Q in this regard. Um, <clears throat> however, the on queues aren't going to work anymore. So if I want to, when you on queue, you add to the end, right? Add to the end of list. So I think that's correct. But now if I want to dequeue, okay, I want to get rid of what's at the Okay, wait, so when I'm adding something, I add it to the end of the list. But then when I spawn it, I spawn it at the top. Right? So if I want to get rid of something, I want to remove... Can I just like remove the last one? <laughs> okay, I don't know, range. Remo remove at... Uh, History dot length last index. Ooh. Oh, last index of an object. I see, I see, I see, I see. Find last. Really? Okay. Um, dot length count minus one. Uh, yeah, that should be safe. But before I do that, I want to, I want to get it actually, um, because I also want to delete. Uh... Hmm. Hmm. Right. Okay, so this should all maybe be in an else. So we make a new one. We spawn a new one. If we have less than the history queue. If we have more than the history queue, what I'd like to do is reuse what what's already there right so if that's the case what i want to do is i don't actually want to remove anything i kind of want to move stuff around can i move 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 no i don't know if there's a easy way to reposition stuff okay so if i get the uh Uh, 
I want to take the... Because when I'm adding them, I'm adding to the zero thing. So I want to take the zeroth one. Remove that from the list. Add it to the end of the list. And then fix the text. I don't know if that's how you get the things in from lists, but we'll figure that out in a moment. Um, old entry. Oh, that does work. Okay. The queue worked pretty good for this, but it still doesn't work for this. So we should stay with lists. This and then this dot remove. Oh boy! At zero. Hold entry. Dot. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Dialogue container. Dialogue container. Uh, Entry dot <clears throat> string index equals index. Okay, so that has new information. We need to force an update on the entry now. Update translations. Maybe it, that's okay to just do that. Hold entry dot update translations. We'll need to update the portrait. So maybe I can just do that here. Old entry dot portrait equals old entry dot get portrait texture. Portrait, portrait dot texture like that so then now the old one has okay that's good and then if we add this back to the end old entry we should have removed the entry from the top of the list updated its internals and then added it to the end of the list and that's what I want to do here and that way I'm not respawning new history dialogue history entries every time this happens. So that's kind of nice. Unfortunately, I don't have a great way to test this. Uh, but that's okay. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> oh. I'm sure it's fine. Jace is not just, uh, is not just a, a pretty... <laughs> So not even that. 80% of the game done when dialogue is done. <laughs> True. Smooth sailing after that. Nothing else. No issues whatsoever. Exactly. <laughs> Look at the deleting history. I'm, re I'm reorganizing, rewriting history. I do whatever I want, Vilsol. Shouldn't have Q have pop DQ? Yes, it should. But the only reason I can't use up uh, a Q in this regard is because... Uh, where the fuck was I? <laughs> It's because of this part, right? Th this part here where I check to see if a certain dialogue is in the history or not, and then repositioning it. Uh, this part here means I'm going to be manipulating the potentially the middle of the queue. And so I really shouldn't just be using a queue in that re in, in that sense. Yeah. Uh, Sandurius, thank you very much for the, uh, for the Prime. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Just a reminder, if you have uh, Primes, you should use them on your favorite streamers. That may be me. It might be someone else. But uh, just remember... Don't let them go to waste. Don't let Bezos have your bucks. <clears throat> How to reproduce the Tears of the Kingdom of Henry Bucks Dev 1. Hey, Jace, I've never looked at a C-sharp dev, but personally, uh, when doing Java dev, I always prefer uh, IntelliJ over VSC. I'm curious for C3, is VSC really better? Uh, C-sharp, sh is VSC code really better than JetBrains? I, I have no idea. Uh, I'm not even using VS Code out of habit. Um, I actually never used it before, uh, before this. I haven't programmed for many years, and I just needed something that worked, and this works. So I'm not sure. Uh, I, I really have no idea if this is better or worse than something else. I hear a lot of good things about Ryder. I mean, you know, I'm sure it's, sure it's pretty good as well. Yeah, I just needed something to write code. 
Lightweight and free. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's basically it, yeah. Yeah, this is C-sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why am I trying to check if something is in the history queue? Because I don't want, um, I don't want to populate the history with the same dialogue. So, you know, right now where I'm speaking to this one tree over and over, I don't want that to push out all the dialogue from the history because I, I, I don't think that's very good. So what I'm thinking of doing is if, if that dialogue is in the history, I'll just move it to the most recent <laughs> position um, and it will preserve the rest of the dialogue. Use what works, but Ryder, yeah, I hear a lot of good things about Ryder. Actually, a lot of people at Coffee Saint switched uh, from uh, Visual Studio to um, Ryder. And they really, really like it. I've never seen uh, IntelliJ before. Uh, Kayla81, thank you very much for the, uh, the follow. Thank you. Much appreciated. Bunny is a Ryder? Wait, what? Wait, what? Okay, so if entry dot dialogue container is equal to dialogue container and entry dot index dog string index is equal to index, <laughs> then we have found a match. Um, <clears throat> uh, wait, play. Thank you very much for the follow. Thank you. Um, yeah, before each is not good here. Maybe I should use four. I think I should use four. Four. History Quayway. <laughs> so if these match, I want to take this. Uh Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I I actually missed something here. I didn't reposition in tree two. Uh yeah, and so here we want to reposition it in the tree. I think I just want to reposition it in the tree. Oh geez. Okay, wait, let's see here. this to the end. Okay, so that's added to the end, but I still need to reposition it in the tree. So what I need to then do is, uh, oh fuck, okay, wait. This spawn location dot get child by index the index needs to be this minus i so for example <laughs> if we are have found the first thing then it will be the last entry is this also minus one i think it is minus one Ugh. 
So for example, if we have 50 entries and I match with the first, because this list here is inverted compared to how things are displayed. So the first element of this list is the oldest element, which will be the last element, the last child that's being displayed. So therefore, the zeroth element will be the 50th child, which will be index 49. So it'll be max dialog entries minus the element minus one. And that's the child. Okay. Oh wait, but that is already this one. That should be the same thing. I shouldn't have to fuck around with this actually. Because I think I'm a little bit of a genius. Um, <clears throat> so how do I move this to the beginning? Move child, move child? Move a child node to a different index. Oh my God. I don't like that this will then go and look search for this when I've already done a search. I don't like that so much. So I wonder if there's like a move child like at index to another index. Child. Is there like a override of this? Can I just get... Um, you know what? Let's just not worry about it. <laughs> Let's just not worry. <laughs> okay. Um, so here... I've removed it, and then we have to break out of here. Otherwise, we're in danger. <laughs> um, if we found a match, we get the entry. We remove it from the queue, from its position. We add it to the end of the queue, because it's the most recent now. And then we get the entry and we move it to the top of the list. Okay. Cool. Reposition and tree here. Okay. So we have the entry. It's the same thing. Same thing, right? Dear God. Dear God. Dear God. Absolutely dev uh, devoted to JetBrains tools. Nice. Eclipse. I remember using Eclipse. Holy shit. Link list, it would be good if you need to remove items in the middle. Yep. Just, yeah, exactly. I actually am not sure how that works in uh, C Sharp. But, but do these lists not sort of already do that? Or how do these lists work? Are there linked lists in C Sharp? Like, linked? Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Yep. Yep. Okay, let's add that to the to-do. I want to see if this works first, uh, but I think I will be using a linked list. Yeah, that makes, that will be better. I think this stuff is done at this. Okay. Switch dialogue history, 
history tool to linked list. <clears throat> uh, actually, this should be a return. Jesus Christ. That could have been bad. All right, the weird thing here is, uh, I like, I mean, I think it's done. The problem right now is I don't really know how to test this. Um, I guess maybe I can change this, the dialogue history to be, you know, like, yeah, maybe we'll make it like five, five big. Um, and then I'll make some extra dialogue stuff. Um, well, we have a bunch of dialogue stuff. So what I probably just do is go to the interact functions here. What dialogues do we have? Test dialog one has two, three, four. Okay, that has four in it. What's this test? Test dialog one. Um. And this will probably work actually. Yeah. One, zero. Use code is my favorite. It's hard to adapt to any uh, other given so much quality of life we get from the extension. The extensions seem pretty cool, yeah. Heavy go guy. So there's no ID that's even remotely close to Golan IntelliSense, I see. The way you need to loop over the list. In a queue, you need to reorder the list after removing an item. No link list, you just need to loop over to find it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. I think the link list is the way to go, yeah. C Sharp, instead of GD script, you C Sharp's amazing, what are you talking about? Jace, have you, so what kind of game you're making? If so, I seem to have missed it. Uh, there's a, did anyone say there's a command? Yeah, there it is, there's a command about game, yep. Top down 2D pixel game, that's all I've said, yeah. Eclipse only uses that in Uni, same. Uh, from rate 50 pointers, not using a list, uh, list, uh, list is probably fine. Yeah, probably. But in, in this case here, like the, what I'm thinking of is like, uh, I mean, every time I'm doing that stuff, it's it's gonna be like reordering the list or something. I have no idea what happens under the hood. It it is probably fine though. There's just not that much data to be worrying about, so But then my O C D will want it to be a linked list now because I, I know it's it's a linked list is like more like almost specifically designed for exactly what I'm trying to do. Could I let you switch to another language? Uh, what's the point of making a unique programming language in the first place? I think it's because GDScript does like a, a bunch of things that jive with their engine and their like software, like their their philosophy in terms of how they've made their engine um, to begin with. I think it's, um, yeah, it's sort of better in that regard. But then like, I don't know, some people, I guess, just like to use C Sharp. Or a lot of people do. <laughs> Crafting is 100% a must in a game though. Perfectly with full screen UI. Get out of here, Pancake. GDScript is really pleasant to use, and it's very specifically focused on Godot, yeah. Yeah, GDScript looks pretty nice. <laughs> uh, Zaymax, thank you very much for the follow. Also, Grimkick and Petrix, thank you very much for the follows, everyone. All right, we're gonna have a lot of dialogue now. Okay, so now we have all the shit. 
Okay, so... If I, uh... Go again... Jimorian's thing should go up to the top here. Okay. So, it's moved, and it's no longer at the bottom. Okay. Okay. That's all well and good. This seems to be working, but the fact that they're cyclical anyway is kind of a... One, two, three, four, five... Wait, why do I have six here? The max number is five! <laughs> the max number is five! Uh, where am I? Uh, uh, uh... Hello? <laughs> Okay, just change it to four. <laughs> well, actually, that's the problem. Uh, yeah, that would have fixed it. It was this. I mean, if anything, actually, it should be this. Right? Um, should be this. So now here, as we do this, all right, we should lose Jamorian's message. Wait, it's at the. That's not good. Okay, well things are <laughs> things are fucked. <laughs> uh... Oh uh, no 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 no! Actually, actually, it's not fucked. It's this actually worked. There's just there's just an edge case here I didn't consider. This actually did work. This is not Jamorian's message. It just has his name there. Um Well, let's fix that part then. That'll fix the name. Doesn't fix the texture, though. Oh. Is there a visibility thing here? Get portrait texture. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Oh, this is kind of weird. Um, <clears throat> or. Right? Or, right? Yeah. This or this, yeah. Force update. This shouldn't be update translation. This should just, this should just be update. Update. <laughs> update entry. And then I should update the um, the texture in here as well. This can be true. <laughs> it's 
So if if I use true every time, why why is it even a why is it even a parameter? Okay. Oh, ads! Ads! Alrighty, folks. Uh, quick three minute break. Three minute break. Be right back. Ads! We're back. Ads are over. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> oh, mom's here. Hello, mom. Mama Jace is here in the chat. Say hello to Mama Jace. Hello, hello. Posture check and hydrate. Thank you. Uh, I work in FQA tester. If you need help, I don't mind helping. Okay, thank you very, very much for offering. I appreciate it. For the moment, I'm good though. I'm good. Commit, ship it. It's nearly done. Nearly done. How long have I been programming? Oof, it's a hard question. I mean, I started. Stu I studied programming when I was uh, 19. That's when I started studying game development. So I guess sort of from then. But I did like web development stuff, like contract jobs before that, since I was 16. And, I mean, if you want to go way back, I was making shitty little games in um, RPG Maker when I was, like, 12 or 13. But, like, I didn't really, um, I didn't really study programming for, you know, until I was, like, like properly until I was, like, 19. Go pee, take your meds, yep, drink some water. Mama Jace! <laughs> You did a good job with this guy. <laughs> RPG Maker on the PlayStation. Yes, that was the first time. First time I uh, I played... Um, uh, I made any uh, video game was RPG Maker on the PlayStation. PlayStation. It was this weird RPG Maker version. Yeah. 
Yo, Mason's here. Hey, Mason. I used to tell him to go do homework. Yeah, I did my homework. I did my homework. I was I was also always pretty decent with school. I think. Portrait texture. Oh boy! Sarah Krask, thank you very much for the sub. The prime, much appreciated, Sarah. Thank you. I think this is done. Maybe. Uh -huh. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so here. Okay, here we go. So Jamorian's name and stuff is gone. That's good. I should hide the label. Actually, the name label if there's no name, actually. But this is working. Um, update translations. Uh, if... Has a name. Uh, dot. Uh, uh, here. Dot visible. That's not visible. Visible. Equals. Uh, string dot is no a white space name tag dot text or maybe maybe what's even better is this I don't know if that matters um, so then the name tag will update its visibility that's good texture <laughs> I don't know if I need to show or hide this but we'll hide it anyway um. You always do my homework by playing games, yeah. I remember mom would always, uh, you would always tell me, you limit how many games I can play. If you can only play this much. Waste of time? Look at me now, mom. <laughs> I'm unemployed. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> Sit at home. <laughs> unemployed. Yeah, that's right. Worked out just fine. <laughs> Okay, so if we add one here, we should have, this should be at the top here. One, two, three, four, five. Really happy to see you should go away. Still a tree, that's the current one. Yeah, it's gone. Uh, I need to do some other tests here. Maybe I can do um, uh, interact, where's the interact here? Let's just do some stupid shit like this. Uh, private static bool or int will make it blah. <sighs> blah plus plus. Uh, no, blah equals blah plus one. Uh, modulo uh, two for now. There's probably like a plus plus blah modulo. Who cares? Uh, and then here we can do like uh, <clears throat> if blah zero, we'll do this stuff. Otherwise, we'll do some other shit. Okay, so now I wanna try and force this thing. So this is gonna be the first message, second message, third message. So I want the third message to pop out of the middle and move to the top, right? That's how that should work.
the stream is diffusing my programming related imposter syndrome. I'm not sure what that means. Homework is busy work and doesn't mean guarantee success life. True. All right, let's test it. So one, two, which is the one that I'm going to be? One, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm doing six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. That means this is the third run. So I'm really happy to see you should pop out of here. Still a tree should still be last. Okay. Still tree. Yeah, it worked. It worked. Uh, the name thing is, still isn't here. Yeah. The name uh, label is not there. <clears throat> Wait, that's weird. This one's name label is invisible. The other ones aren't. General question, what is the best way to do translations for a game? I mean, um, that you can change the language in game. Um, how do you mean? I'm not sure. Uh, do you mean, do you mean like in, uh, how, how, how to make that change? There's so many moving parts to like localization. Uh, so Godot allows me to add translations. Like this. This is Swedish and Japanese. It allows me to just add these here. And then under the hood, if I just change the locale, then whenever I fetch translated strings, it'll get the strings that are translated for that locale. The the difficult part, so so then at the end of the day, like so in, in game now, what will probably happen with the UI is like there'll be a drop down on you pick your language and you just pick that, it changes the locale, and then from that point on all the strings will like translate to that locale. But um, if I, uh, um, but the hard part is, how do you, how how do you ensure that you're translating your strings? How do you ensure that you're fetching all your strings that you you create, so that they, that get ex gets exported to your translation files, that that can be Im easily imported? Like that that's the hard part. That's kind of tricky. I always feel like I'm not that good at programming compared to my peers, but watching this makes me feel okay because I can follow what's happening just fine. I think it's a common thing amongst programmers, but uh, amongst a lot of people, obviously, the whole imposter syndrome thing. Um, I know that at least within games, it's very prominent amongst many, many game developers. Um, and it's, it's certainly prominent amongst programmers too. But you know what, though? Like... Actually, one of the things that I've wanted to show, and it's interesting that you say that because one of my goals with doing this, right? So there's a couple of goals that I'm doing like with the dev live streams and videos and things. I wanna archive my work for starters. That's my own personal thing. But another thing is I want to, like I think that there's a massive gap between uh, what gamers, I guess you could say, you know, what, what they understand about the process of making games or what they imagine the process to be like um versus what it's actually like now it sounds like you're already a programmer um but it's a similar thing anyway right where at the end of the day whenever you see people post their stuff online or whatever it's always the finely tuned finely edited perfect it's done kind of stuff you know but the process is never shown and the process is different from person to person um and i think it's really easy to get a false perception of like what the process is like for people who are not game developers, but even other game de developers. So hopefully that that helps. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm kind of glad to hear that feedback, Lucky. <clears throat> because at the end of the day, like there, I mean, there are people who are really good and really talented for sure, and maybe more talented than average for sure. But at the end of the day, I feel like the process is never, ever, ever as glamorous or as amazing as how people portray the end process, the, the end product to be. Right? So I think it's really easy to get like a warped sense in that in that regard. Like I I'm not I'm not that great of a I'm not a super great 
programmer. Maybe that's just my imposter syndrome. I'm not sure. But I, I mean, I constantly feel the limits of my ability when I when I program. Um, but like, it, it's okay. It doesn't matter. You don't need to be the world's greatest programmer to get things done. You just need to like, you know, just just do what you can as often as you can. And you just get where you get eventually. Yeah. <clears throat> what language does Godot require? Uh, Godot has GD script, which is a built-in language, uh, but it also supports C Sharp. There is also C++ support, I think, but I haven't strayed there, and it seems like there's more hoops to jump through to get that working. I feel the same way in software dev. I'm a QA, and even though I've been doing it for 14 years and have been learning Python for just as long, I still feel so inadequate compared to some people. Imposter syndrome is mean. Yeah, it is. I mean, I have this weird thing, like, you guys will not believe this. Guys, I don't know if this is a fucking... I can't remember if I've talked about this or not, but... Um, like, so maybe many of you are here from like the whole satisfactory thing, right? And like, I was a community manager. I made a lot of videos for them. I did like a lot of streams for them, but you guys, you have like, it's, it boggles my fucking mind and pancake. I've talked to uh, many times. Pancake is a dear friend of mine. And I, the poor guy has to deal with me complaining about this all the time. Like when I go to make a video or when I go to do, uh, a stream, I have this feeling where I'm like, no, I can't do this stream, not this time, right? Or like, I go to make a video, There's, no, I'll never make this video. It's never going to get done. I have like these feelings and like thoughts with every video I make, with every stream I do. Like it's, but it's obviously insane. Obviously. Like, look at the, like the, I've done, I've got this incredible track record of like doing work and making videos. Like to think that like this next video I want to make I can't do is, is absurd, obviously, right? But yeah, it's just this deeply rooted thing and I have to like deal with it every single time I stream, every single time I, I make a video. Um, yeah, it's, but it's just, it's just the imposter syndrome thing, I think. And uh, it's, it's obviously irrational, but you, yeah, I just, uh, <laughs> you just gotta work on it, I guess. It's, it's annoying. It's really annoying. Uh, Berdiation, it's going well. Uh, thank you very much for the follow. Come to keep your impulse syndrome in check, don't worry, I got you. Yeah, you're keeping it healthy. Single-handedly, Vilsol. Uh, have you used Unity? Yes, I have. How would you, uh, do you rank it in compared to Godot. I'm learning Unity, but if there's a better tool, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like Unity is probably a better tool sim simply because it's been around for longer. It's um, had more resources pumped into it, I think, than Godot has. I'm assuming, I'm guessing. Um, and so in many, many ways, like there's like a larger community, there's like more resources and things like that. So in many ways, I think Unity is better. There might even be better features in Unity. I'm not sure. But um, Godot is obviously incredibly capable. It's kind of nice to use. It's free. Um, so I don't know. It's, it is, it's whatever. Uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. <clears throat> yeah. The best things about Godot is that, yeah, it's open source is free and it's, it's tiny and super lightweight. Unreal is unbelievably powerful, but it's going to kick your ass if you're a beginner. I mean, po yeah, possibly, yeah, possibly. Uh, Unreal is, is really big and heavy and unwieldy, and I also used it for nine years, and I don't want to use it anymore, just because I want to do new things. But it's in insanely good. It's insanely good. Unreal is just super bloated. Yeah, I think so. But it's it's uh, it's good. It's, uh, it's, it's incredibly capable, though. Like, if you need all that shit that's in it, then it's like, yeah, I mean, that's like the best engine to pick. But if you're going to make a tiny little 2D game, you could just use something else. You should start a podcast. We've recorded so many episodes, Pancake. Self-doubt is very real. Yeah. It's un it's it's annoying because it's so deeply ingrained. Like, I, I don't really... I can't I can't get rid of it anymore. I, I just... I just learned to deal with it and cope with it. So, like, when I feel that sort of doubt and I'm like, oh, I can't do streams or whatever, I just go, okay, that's, that's that part of my brain who's always there you know i'm just gonna go and stream anyway and see what happens so that's just kind of how i deal with it i still feel it but i just i just stream anyway or i just make videos anyway <clears throat> but developing a game requires difficult i mean requires difficulties
Joseph Sather, you're doing great, thank you. Most of game dev is terrifying, and even if you can figure out the logic part, then there's the art, which, no, my art is ass, dude. Dude, I'm so scared of doing art on streams. <laughs> Greeting, fellow superior good old game developer. <laughs> Hello, Kevin Pounce. What is the best way to start programming as a hobby? I think the best thing is, um, the most important thing with programming, the single, in my opinion, the single most important thing is that you do things that you enjoy doing. That's the most important. Yep, as Jed is saying there, to just do it. It is the most important thing. Um, it is easy to get caught in the weeds with what language you should choose, what tools you should use. It actually just doesn't matter. If you're starting out, the most important thing is do something that feels good, feels fun, that you start getting uh, results with, and that you just enjoy doing. The rest of it can come later. Um, yeah. So I would say, like, if you want to make games, like, pick up an engine like Godot or Unity or uh, maybe not Unreal. I mean, you can if you want. Follow some tutorials. Just do some stuff there. If you learn some concept in a tutorial, start to apply it in some other way um, uh, beyond the tutorial. Um, the best thing you can do is try and try and come up with some kind of game or application or interactive something that you would like to try and do and then try and make that and look for tutorials that can teach you the the, the things that you need that might help you make your make your game and when i say make a game like it has to be the simplest thing like the first thing you should probably do is just like some buttons that you can click that make numbers get bigger you know like something as simple as that because if you've never like done programming or made a game before the the the, the part where you type the programming code in that is one piece of the pie. The rest of the pie is how do you just like launch the editor, right? You need to learn how to do that. Do you have to build the editor? You need to learn how to do that, right? Like how do you create a new file, right? All that kind of stuff. All of these like weird, like subtle secondary skills are also important, right? So, so set yourself like a really, 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 really easy goal and just try and do it. And you'll run into random ass fucking roadblocks that you never would have seen before along the way that you feel are completely unnecessary, but you gotta learn those as well. So that's what that's what I would say. But the most important thing is do what you can to like keep your interest going. Because the most important thing is that you you put in the time. And if you hate what you're doing, you're not gonna put in the time. So find a way to make it fun and enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, Vilson, you can't even do that drawing. Jeez. Uh, make silly stuff. Yeah, yeah. I could tell it's mint choco ice cream from the pickles. Uh, pixels, nice. Uh, I would I would recommend not using C, but I think, uh, you know, if someone wants to use C, if that's what, what is interesting for them, then, you know, they can use C. Have to give good old a try. I do well enough in C-sharp, but with GDScript being Python-like, I feel more at home there. Yeah, I mean, give it a go. GDScript seems really nice. I made something that reads from a text file and runs everything through to upper and spits it back out. That's cool, yeah. And like, if you have these tiny little goals and you achieve them, even if they're not grand games, if you, if you like have these tiny little goals and you still achieve what you set out to do, that's like a dopamine hit. That's like a rush. That'll keep you going, yeah. And you're making a little slot machine thing. That's that sounds fun. Yeah. Hi, Welland. I called it the Caps Locker Fire. Nice. The game's in assembly like hey, the Will. pros. Yeah. Hello there. I just wanted to mention that I used to always enjoy your community updates. I could always sense the enjoyment in them. Anyway, keep up the good work wherever the road takes Thank you. Thank you very much for the three euro. 3.33. The Money Gamer. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. And thanks for the kind words. I'm glad that you enjoyed my uh, community work before. Good to see you here. I can't see what's... Jeez, someone ban Wolin. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. That's terrible. <clears throat> Rollercoaster Tycoon is a Marvel Engineering wrapped in assembly. Yeah, isn't that like... Wasn't that made only in assembly or something? That's crazy. There was a, there was a game that I uh, played recently called Human Resource Machine, and that was actually just assembly programming, but like in disguise. Uh, and it was actually really, really fun. And doing all the optimization challenges were really fun. There was w only one challenge I had to look up online how to do, and it was unfortunately a really disappointing uh, solution <laughs> because it wasn't like a programming solution that you need to solve. It's like, instead of doing loops and things like that, you just had to hard code everything, and that was the solution. And I was like, Jesus Christ. That sucks, <laughs> but whatever. 
But apart from that, like every all the other pu uh, puzzles were really fun. By one person, insane. ASM and C is all you really need in this world. I mean, technically speaking, true. But if you go insane using them, then they're not very helpful. Uh, you know that a lot of uh, people who have ADHD end up in software dev industry because uh, of the easily accessible dopamine. <laughs> it is pretty nice. That's like one of the things that I, um, when I was learning uh, Godot, that was fun. Like it was constantly learning new things. That was these little dopamine hits, even though it was frustrating because I couldn't do anything because I didn't know how the engine worked. But. Work done. Fun, uh, time for beer. Nice. I actually think that... Uh, isn't this done? Isn't this done? I think it's done. Right. We're happy to see you. Yeah, moved out of there. I mean, I think it's done. I can't say it's extensively tested, but... I think I have done what I... Oh, switch to link list. This has been sorted. Oh, this is something. The BB code. That can be for later. I don't really know what I want to do with this yet, actually. So I'm going to leave that. We'll leave that. This is not solved. This, this potential is there. It does. Okay, yeah. I don't know what to do about this. This gave me a fucking aneurysm uh, earlier in stream. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know if I should, uh, maybe I just don't have this support. Yeah, I think the easiest way to do this is if I if I go down this route, I just, um, I just make the dialogue, uh, I just get rid of this character and I just put it all in one chunk. I think that's just what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I think that's just what I'm gonna do. That's, I think it's perfectly acceptable too. Uh, the only thing I need, which I haven't solved yet, and I'll have to look into tomorrow, if I have time tomorrow, is the um, the size. So this should be oh 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 the name labels. I need to fix that. Um, this should be resizing to the size of the contents, uh, and it's not doing that. So that's the um, one thing that I need to fix. I think yeah. That's the only thing, that and the labels. Why is that not working? Let's fix that real quick. Let's get another dopamine hit. Let's do a fix. Name tag visible is null or is it? Oh, wait, should this not be this? Oh, I'm so dumb. Is that literally it? That was it. <laughs> that was it. Jamorian. Yep. Nice. Nice. Actual dialogue history. Wait, what was this? What change was this? Oh. I didn't test the add to history. Wait, what state is that in? Add to history. Add to history. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's do the uh, the commit message, folks. Wait, what's this? There should be no changes here. Okay, that's a very, very important change. We'll include that. Um, so, uh, dialogue history UI implementation. 
uh, support for changing uh, language uh, dialogue and dialogue history that doesn't make sense but whatever um, reworked underlying history functionality um, cool cool safe check I think everything's saved sync to the cloud Sending it up. Sending it up. Head out. All right. Catch you later, Wang Chi. Thank you very much for hanging out. Much appreciated. <sighs> All right. Well, that's probably the stream. Let's catch up on some chat stuff real quick. You're already saying, yeah, true. Oh, you should do meant to ban that? Damn. any kind of automated testing you can do in Godot? I'm not sure. I haven't looked into it. I haven't looked into it. Um, tried doing some Project Euler stuff, and I got the first one by brute forcing it. But the later ones just melt my red dam. Focus on one thing in life. Everything's... Oh, jeez, that sucks. Can you kick the baby? What baby? What baby? What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, Marcel, thanks for the follow, and also Dave the Caveman, thank you so much. NFC tag tape, the jeez, also really. Um, what game engine am I using? I'm using Godot. Using Godot. Could you uh, give a small advice on how to make good commit comments? Uh, 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 get good get commits. Um, not really, actually. I, I really have no idea what messages to write. But um, yeah, I, I kind of actually I'm really bad when it comes to version control. I'm not I'm not too sure. Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, like like branching and stuff like that. I don't have like an intuitive understanding of all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I, I usually I keep things really simple. It's like if my stuff works, then I'll I'll, I'll push it. If not, then I won't. Um, but when I was working with Coffee Stain, like of course I would have like different staging, different branches if I needed to like, if I had some stuff that was like broken and not in a good state to commit. But like I never had a really good intuitive understanding, and every time I needed to do that stuff, I had to like relearn how to do that. It's kind of weird, yeah. Yeah. Can you mini games in your game? <laughs> I'm sure you can, Blasteroid. I'm sure you can. I'll commit uh, working code. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good start, especially if you're working in a team, right? Like if you're working by yourself, I guess maybe maybe that can make some sense. You know, you can always roll back later if if you need to. But if you're working with a team, definitely don't commit broken code unless you're on a your own branch or something. And if you like need to change workstations or something, that can be pretty good as well. Uh, pause to check and hydrate. Thank you very much, Kisakas. Hydrating. If you're having to write complicated commit messages, the commit is too big. Keep commits small so the messages can be small too. Yeah, that's true. I always find, um, I always find, uh, yeah, I think that's actually pretty good that's a pretty good sometimes sometimes like I'll work all day on something and then at the end I'll write the commit message and it'll be like did this and like that's it and I'm like well yeah I guess that is all I did but that was an involved process but yeah I think that like as soon as you get as soon as you you I feel like as soon as you finish doing what the thing that you want to do then you just commit that right 
and and don't don't start on another thing after the first thing if that makes sense but i don't really know i'm just kind of talking out my ass i don't really know Commit message found 5765 ways to make it not work true first i tried this and then i tried this and then i tried this Yeah. Alrighty, folks. I am cooked. Uh, Anna is actually streaming. I say we raid Anna because Anna's always hanging out here and Anna is delightful. I say we uh, we raid them. Anna Ruma. Uh, raid messages. See if this works today. Why is it not working? <laughs> What what the hell? This happened last time as well. Yeah, how how is that how is that broken? I should have done the raid messages first. I gotta hurry, I gotta hurry, I gotta hurry. Oh boy! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. What was that? Mason with a prime! Thank you so much! Thank you, Mason. Uh raid. Why doesn't this work? Advanced settings. Both. It should work. Okay, here. If you are subscribed. Here's the raid message. If you are not subscribed. Oh, oh whoops. Uh, raid two. Uh, here's the other raid message. Okay. Anna Ruma implies the existence of Anna in a garden. I don't know what that means. But, uh, yeah, thank you everyone for hanging out. Much appreciated. Um, and uh, I have a Discord if you want to hang out in between streams. Hopefully that works. Oh my god, nothing works. What is going on? Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. Next stream will be Saturday, it'll be Variety. I'll probably be playing Satisfactory. And the next dev stream will be maybe noon on Tuesday. I'm gonna can't... Yeah, anyway, the stream's good. The raid's happening. Bye everyone, bye!